The kid hooked up his dad's electric power drill to the device in order to power the device and also the fan to keep mom cool. That's a considerate kid. Me, I just made my mom listen to the Ghosts and Goblins theme for 4,000 hours. This is a reverse retro pal situation. We're, we're switching seats this week because we have a special show. This feels weird. I'm in charge. I'm in the command center while Alex is in the, uh, the usual Danny position. I'm in the gaming seat. The gaming seat. I'm in the hot seat. Alex is in the gaming hot seat in more ways than one. Yeah, I have the uh, heating pad on and everything. <laughs> Turn it. I'm, I'm boiling. It's like under. Oh, good. It's hey, Danny. Yeah. It's finally cooled down to a nice crisp. Delightful 99 degrees in Austin. Oh, good. We finally, yeah. We're finally we finally under the 100 mark <laughs> for the day, anyway. It's going to be like this for the rest of July and August and uh, whatever comes after that, too, probably. Hi, everybody. we got a show here. I'm stealthily trying to adjust our, uh, our, our microphone volumes and readings and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, volume's a little low for me. Let's try changing that, and okay. let's try smacking the microphone while I do that. Well, while uh, we wait for that, I want to have some folks to thank. Thank you to Blombie Way of Life. <laughs> His name delighted us before the show. The brand new sub. Thank you, Blombie Way thank of Life. You. Thank you, Thank you, Sepasai19 for the 100 bits. Spin thank cut. You. Thank you for the 38 month resub. Do appreciate that. Thank, thank you, Double Ray, for the 59 month resub. Holy fuck. 59 That's freaking months. That's a lot months. of months. And thank you, Arpiga, uh, for the 34 month resub. And Fire Mountain for the 23-month resub. Wow, I'm so excited to join the first of the new twice-a-week Famitsu Cruise Along streams. <laughs> yeah, now. every every new issue they release, we're going to be uh, covering every single one of them cover to cover. All of them. Hope you're looking forward to that. It's, it's called Danny Tanks the Retro Pals. Hey, it had to happen sometime. Yeah, eventually. This is our Jump the Shark moment, so make sure you watch this shit. I want to... We don't even have a, a shark. Oh, yeah. We don't even have one of those... Uh, those popular Ikea sharks that all the... The blage. The, the blage, yes. The we don't blage. We don't have a blage around to jump over, but uh, we're going to do it metaphorically. Okay. This is where I turn off the introduction. Uh, you turn off the background first. Fuck. Turn off the back... No, not the introduction <laughs> again. <laughs> no, it's it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> You're having an Alex moment. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Mooware. 35-month resub comfy story time stream. Yeah, get cozy. Get yourself some root beer and yeah... Yeah, I have no idea what's coming this week. Actually, I do have a little bit of an idea because uh, the people voted for it. We took a poll to our patrons last week. We asked them, which classic magazine should we take a look at on stream next Wednesday? And it turned out like this. A freaking tie! It was a freaking... Nobody could make up their minds. <laughs> nope, not a single person. They were just like, I don't know. It was a collective shrug. So the results of the official Retro Pals coin flip means that we're playing bi-weekly famitsu we're not playing it we're reading it we're reading it it's hard being in the hot seat i see all these meters i'm all like oh no my voice is peaking by one decibel what do i do <laughs> yeah it's too much info right it's, it's like info it's overload. A, yeah it's information overload thank you mako tensai for the three month resub hey welcome welcome we're gonna do this we are gonna do this okay Famitsu, 1986 transport yourself back in time you don't know what's coming for the nes you don't know what's coming for the video game industry at large. All that you know is from this magazine called Bi-Weekly Famitsu, which is just launched. There was no magazine like it beforehand. Well, there was like computer magazines and stuff, but mm -hmm. this one was dedicated right towards the console market. This is the, the stuff us nerds care about. Mm -hmm. Us NES fans. Us uh, Sega Genesis stands. Us uh, Famitsu freaks. Ooh, Famicom that's good. Famicom freaks, there we go. Famicom freaks, yeah, yeah, God. yeah. I need that as a tattoo. Okay. And now, 
to make the stream actually start without any problems <laughs> yeah. whatsoever seamlessly seamlessly we're going to we're going to do like hang on turn off main background there you go turn on comic book reader hey there you look go. at this look at this fella here this is the very first issue of bi-weekly famitsu June 20th, 1986, you could head out to your favorite newsstand and buy this thing. Here's uh, what the average gamer looked like in 1986. So sweaty. He's so sweaty, dude. But it's so true, right? Like, I'm holding this controller and I'm like, I'm sweating. I'm sitting in here in this 100 degree room and uh, I've got various uh, hardware types and joysticks around me. Here you see he has both an Atari 2600 joystick and a Famicom controller, which is kind of interesting. I guess the, the Atari had some presence over in Japan. Mm. Who can say? Who can say? Now, uh, you'll notice, first of all, that every single one of these names, all the stuff in here, it's all in Japanese. Yeah. Um, I know some of it. I, I know the katakana. We'll, we'll have to get by on that. We'll just have to see how much we learn. Okay. I think we can gleam quite a bit from what's within these pages. I, I'm gleaming I'm gleaming sweat off this guy. <laughs> I'm gleaming a lot. We're we're some shiny pals tonight, we're I tell gleaming. you what. Gleam. So check this out. Let's switch to two page format for this. Ooh, King Knight. Look at this glorious tableau you see right in front tableau. of you. Tableau. <laughs> Alex, why don't you uh, why don't you load this one up? Oh, okay. Da, 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 da. King Knight. King Knight. King's Knight. Uh -huh. Okay, let's go. Hey, look! It's King's Knight. Mm-hmm. So you're wondering how people got suckered into buying games like King's Knight. It was ads like these. This glorious two-page spread that you see right at the front of the, the very first issue of Famitsu. Did you see that really cute dragon? On the cover? I mean, on the title screen? That's not I did. Cover. Okay, good. Is our, uh... Is the gameplay volume coming through? Yeah, it, it's coming through from desktop audio, but you should probably mute desktop audio and have Aver Media be. Yeah, good stuff. idea. Yeah. Okay, make some noise in the game. Okay. That looks good. Okay, good. Mics are low. Let's try and fix that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting closer to the uh, the, mic, the mic now. I was... Oh, I'm in a hole! Oh, I got a hole! <laughs> See, that's the problem with Alex. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You think you're getting a good reading on him, and suddenly he's in a hole. Well, Ray Jack de dead. <laughs> Where is the princess? Whoa, 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 whoa! Look at who I am now. Okay, this game's good. Knight, little monster, child thief, wizard. Together they form the King Knight. Okay, uh, the, S want... the S is optional. I want you. I got <laughs> you. Notice the katakana here it says King's Knight. They just forgot the S. They they include the apostrophe though. I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot going wrong here. This is an early ad from Square, as you see. And you look at this and you think, man, I'm gonna buy this. It's got some good anime art. It's it got does. some good anime characters. This is probably an RPG from the people who would be known for RPGs in a few years after this. What's what's your opinion? My opinion is it's hard. <laughs> Everybody stop attacking me! I'm wizard! What's I'm my wizard. Name? What's my name? Uh Cal Calava. Dead. Dead. Who else is left? Yes! Okay, now the game's good. Okay. Yeah, you can, you can be the monster now. I don't want that thing. That thing, like, powers me down now. Five Weekly Famitsu Issue 1, the contents. Look at this. We got some We got some Gradius. We got the Mr. Satan from Ghosts and Goblins, a.k.a. Makai Mura. And we have, um... What's the Japanese title of this? Super Chinese, for some reason? For some reason over there, they called Little Ninja Kids, uh, Super Chinese. That... I don't know about that name. Maybe we can find out why. Oh, look at this. Here we have, um... No! This appears to be ninja fishing here on the left. Uh, here in the middle is, uh... What the fuck are they doing? They're gaming! This Maybe? is what the average gamers were up to in 1986. Whoa, is this like a prototype issue of Famitsu? Yeah! Look at Mario! He's got a weird, got a weird oh, nose. God, this setup. It's just like a suitcase you put a Famicom in. Ass. I hope we find out more about this. What, what about the hat? Whoa, the Famicom hat! Holy sh! Dude, you're right. Wow! Fashion! Un Unbelievable. I wanna wear that. We're seeing the best of 80s fashion and the best of 80s games today. While I learn 
learning how to, to learn the controls. I'm living. I'm loving. Into okay. the ocean I go. First of all, this is uh, one of the first articles you see here. This is like a giveaway or something. If you win this contest, you could get one of these cool games. Or you could get some of this uh, merch, which they printed up for their very first issue. <laughs> kind of presumptuous, but I guess, you know. I like the, uh, so I could, I can get merch of the sweaty man. I like the fake uh, diskette here. Or maybe it's a real diskette. Maybe it has secrets on it. Secrets that have been lost to time. <laughs> yeah, work it, gamer. <laughs> and look at this. Up here on the next page is the very first Famitsu Top 30. And Alex, you were playing what's number one on this list. You know what's number one in June of 1986 for the Famicom? King... King Knight? It's Gegege no Kitaro. Get to it. All right. <laughs> Super Mario Brothers has been dethroned. It is at a mere number two compared to what must be the greatest game ever. Which one? This one? Oh, the first one, yeah. Yeah, that one. Here we go! Have a look at this thing, if you've never seen this game. This is why I was interested in checking out this magazine, because, of course, the games you expect to see there are there. You get to see Zelda, you get to see Super Mario Brothers, but this is the reality. Kids, when they got to the store... <laughs> When they got to the store, they didn't know what Mario was. They didn't know what No Zelda was. They did know what Gage Gage no Kitaro was, though. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, I can only assume it had a manga adaptation. Yes! Oh, it started as a manga. It started as a manga, and then it became an anime. Many anime. Various movies get released over the years. But since this is 1986, uh, who Bandai had developed this was their constant partner and friend, Tosei. This is, this is really giving Tosei. This is such a Tosei game. This eventually got released over here as Ninja Kid, I think it was. Some of you may have played that. Hey, Nocturne Dust Claw. Welcome. It was an anime at the time of the game's release. That makes sense. Yeah. So even as far back as 1986, like, <laughs> licensing tie-ins play more of a role in what games are popular than actual game quality. Thank you, Rondo of Dad. 44 months. Oh, thank you. Number two in Famitsu, number one in our hearts. You know, it, it's a shame, Alex, that you couldn't have played the number two game, Super Mario Brothers. Is that Super... <laughs> it's okay. It's, it's... You know what? I'm glad that you've switched positions just to torture me. Mm-hmm. That's fine. This is a revenge stream. I mean, that's fair. You know what? Why don't you play number three? What's number on the three? list? Number three is Mighty Bomb Jack. Oh, I like that game. I don't like to torture Alex too much. Well, you can torture me more. It's okay. Are you going to make me go to the torture room? Is that why I'm playing this? Uh, that's up to you. That's all up to how you play the game. So the top three, June 1986. Trashy Tosei developed platformer based on Gage Gage no Kitaro. Super Mario Brothers, of course. And the third game is this, which had been picking up steam in recent weeks. I think this is uh, this just came out before this magazine was released. Sakana Cow, thank you for the, 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 the new sub. Oh, thank you! And thank you, Dream Harrier, for the raid. Oh, thank you, Dream Harrier. Uh, we are playing a lot of games, but we are reading through a cool magazine. And seeing what games are talking about. Oh, oh Bomb boy. Jack I'm is dying. the is the opposite of Bomberman. Yeah, he has to defuse the bombs. He doesn't set them off like some kind of maniac. What's game number four here? This is this is Naze no Murasame Jo, which came out for the Famicom Disk System. Again, that's a good game, so you can't play it. That is Nintendo published. I think it's pretty recent at the time of this magazine. So uh, kids would be interested in the old the old Murasame Jo, as they called him. Murasame Jo. Good wrestler name, too. And number five here is a game I'm not going to make you play because it has a lot of screen flashing. Thank you. This is good old Kage no Densetsu, also known as Legend of Kage <laughs> over here. I got the bombs wrong. I'm going to die. That's gonna... okay. Just do, sure? just do your best. Okay. Spartanberry, I read that as a Wii U, unfortunately. <laughs> it was released on there, unfortunately. Big mistake. Yeah, yeah, Murasame Castle, that's, that's that game. This is uh, June 86, so halfway through the year, everyone's sweating. This is uh, summertime. This is summertime in the city. And here we have the rest of the list. So, top five. It's basically what you expected. Brand new anime license game. Uh, Super Mario Brothers. Let's just read off the rest of the list. We have Atlantis No Nazo at number six. Atlantis No Nazo was popular for God's sake. People actually played this thing. Lots of people. <laughs> At number seven is Ninja Hattori Kun. Alex, load that up. I'm not sure what game that is. 
What is a ninja Hattori kun? Hudson. Hudson. So Fujiko Shogakukan TV. This is a this is based off of a license. This is based off a license. Let's yeah, go. lots of people played LJN games too. <laughs> so you can't blame Oh my god. You can't, can't blame Bondi oh. too much. Oh, he controls like the worst thing I've ever played. This is your number seven, huh? Ugh. I mean, I guess kids didn't have much choice back then. It's like either play this or play Spelunker or something. Yeah, let's let's look at the other games here while Alex Ugh. tries to figure out Ninja Hattori Kun. This is bad. Number eight, down from number six previously, is Gradius. Nine is Zelda no Densetsu. And we got Goonies, Spy vs. Spy, the Portopia serial murder case. Kind of dropping, even though it was extremely popular after it first came out. Oh, you're translating the MSX version of Portopia? How, how different is it? I've played a little bit of the Famicom one. I like this guy's sprite. Here at 13, okay. holding strong is Dig Dug 2. Then we have Tag Team Pro Wrestling, which gets a... <laughs> it's a it got a big boost this week. The word is out about Tag Team Pro Wrestling from Data East, that game that we played on stream a couple of weeks ago. It's not good. It's where the strong bads come from, but that's about it. I do like the strong bads, but I don't like the gameplay. Rounding out the list, we have Argus. Why don't you check out Argus? I, don't, I doubt we're going to see future Argus coverage in this magazine, so you might as well show it now. Argus. Argus. Yeah, it's a Yu-Gi-Oh card level star. This one's super powerful. Jalico! Oh, this is like some Xevious. This is just Xevious. Xevious was pretty popular. It was a thing to rip off and a thing to play. Jeff Gersman's right. Dig Dug 2 does suck. And he's the, the world's foremost uh, Mr. Do connoisseur, so I believe him. At the end of the list, we have baseball for some reason. Early-ass Famicom baseball making a comeback. It's the, it's the summer season. You want to play some baseball. <laughs> Everyone's real hot and sweaty for baseball. And we have Twin B, who everyone is also all hot and sweaty for. Oh, I'm very sweaty for Twin B. We got tennis. Mm -hmm. We got... Ma... Hmm. Ma... No, Mahjong. Duh. <laughs> Mahjong at number 19. And at number 20 is golf. So we're still, still early enough that these extremely early Mapper Zero black box games that got released over here for the NES... Stuff like pinball, stuff like golf, tennis, and all that. That's still selling well. And you you can probably see why Gegege no Kitaro took off. Because the competition is literally games from 1983. Yeah, and that game is a bit more competent than uh, the Ninja Hattori Kun. I'd say so. Real hot. Arigato, hey! <laughs> thank you for the two months. Oh, thank you! Yeah, I'm having to re remember some of my, my Hiranyana and stuff. Let's quickly go through these here at the bottom. I need to... I don't need to squint. I can zoom in. Yeah. I'm in control of this shit. I control my own destiny, damn you it. You do! You're number one! We have four Nin Uchi Mahjong. We have Hide Light Special. <laughs> Taking a big tumble from 15 to 22. Aww. Obake no Kyutaro, which I think we're going to see in a little bit, so I'm not going to go too much into it. Soccer. Spartan X. Released over here is Kung Fu. Uh... Pom... Pom... Bomberman. <laughs> I'm really bad at this. Bomberman at 26. Number 27 is a title I cannot read. Number 28 is Son Son, that Capcom ported arcade game. Then we have Gyrodyne, and then Magmax. Oh, I want to line up. Like, there's a few games in here that I'd want to play, but a lot of these are just like, oh, it's so old, it's so ancient. The new games are slowly replacing the old, and soon people will start to prefer games like Gegege no Kitaro and, uh, what is this? Argus. And Argus. Enjoying Argus? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm playing it. Does that count for anything? It's, it's Zevious, but Oh, it's a, it's a Seita game, so that would be probably a Shogi game here at number 27. Yeah, that's what it is. Seita is typically trading in their, their Shogi stuff. If only it was Mad Max. That would be cool if there was a, a Japanese-developed Famicom Mad Max instead of the bullshit one we got. Alright. Now we have the Reader's Top 20. Alex, why don't you play the game that is number one on the Reader's Top 20, the game that is on everyone's mind in June of 1986, Goonies. Uh, uh y'all could, uh, could you turn down the sound a little bit, baby? Yeah, sure. Goonies. On the game? On the game, yeah. Goonies, huh? Goonies? Goonies. Goonies. 
They're good enough mm -hmm. for you. Good, good enough for me. I'm gonna have to look at the, the volume for this because these games do not respect sound balance. This one looks okay. So, what about this game really won over the, the readers of Famitsu Number 1, do you think? Um, the rats. Those are good rats. They have really big, well-defined ears. I think that's what did it, yeah. This also came out on MSX around the same time, and it was a really big hit for Konami in Japan. Here in the States, we only got Goonies 2 as a home cartridge release, though we did get Goonies 1 on the Play Choice 10 and Versus System arcades. Kick that guy in the nuts. So if you're a kid who remembers a Goonie game with really nice rats, that was in arcades. You never had that at home, sorry to say. Continuing on the reader list, we have Zelda no Densetsu at number 2, Gega Ge no Kitaro. Not as popular with the readers as, as it is with the editors. Editors really trying to push that new Bandai game. Readers are not having it just yet. And we have Gradius, Ninja Hattori-kun, come on! Boo! Twin B does way better here on the reader poll than it did in the, uh, the editor's poll. Super Mario Bros. a mere number 7, fuck that. We got Ninja Hattori-kun now. We don't gotta deal with your shit anymore, Mario. And then... Dick Duck 2, good lord. Duh, Naze no Murasame Jo. And then Mighty Bomb Jack. So there's a lot of overlap between what the editors and what the readers like. But... Goonies. Goonies. Was, was the real standout. Yeah, Dick Duck 2. Can you believe it? There was a time when there was demand for Dick Duck 2. A very brief window of time. Bombed my ass. Let's see. This... Disc Rider Top 10. Ooh, Top 10 Famicom Disk System games. Notice it's still so early, there's not even 10 games to round out the whole fucking list. <laughs> it's like, it's uh... just the top 8. Wow. This thing is like bleeding edge technology at this point. Number 1, Nazo no Murasame Joe. Then Super Mario Brothers. Baseball! That's why baseball had a resurgence of popularity. It was, um, they released it as a Disc Rider game. So you only had to pay, what was it, 1500 yen? Oh, okay. Maybe even cheaper. Like, hey, we can play baseball again, and this time it's cheap. Then tennis, Zelda no Densetsu, soccer, golf, and Mahjong. Oh, it was five bucks, even better, jeez. Just get a disc and then rewrite it forever. Good bargain, good bargain. The, the bargain-minded gamer will want to uh, rewrite the Famicom Disk System disc. That's my tip to you. And here's the USA Top 10. Surprise, they're covering overseas games as well. The, the NES was out by this point, and uh, you get to see what the top 10 best games were in the USA via the, the filter of Famitsu, so take this with a grain of salt. We have Super Mario Brothers, Kung Fu, Baseball, Excite Bike. It's nice how they rendered this all in English, you notice? Hey! <laughs> that is nice. A little bit less of a strain for me. We got 10-yard fight, golf, soccer, pinball, tennis, and wrecking crew. So we're still very firmly in the black box era. All of these games had the, uh, the familiar Nintendo house style at the time, since they were the only ones releasing games. Why is wrecking crew $30? What's Why the, is wrecking crew $30? What's, what's the deal here? Yeah, all these games are listed as $24.95. Were they ever that cheap? I seem to remember them being more like $30 or $40. Could be inflation, too. And mm -hmm. this, these may also just be test market prices. I don't think the NES even launched uh, <laughs> across the country at this point. Sorry. You doing okay over there? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. And if you look at the test, it, the text, it mentions FAO Schwartz, so maybe that's where they're pulling the data from. Oh, I heard that FAO, yeah, that was where they originally were test marketing it, I remember that. I'm in the sewer now. Hey, welcome to the sewer. Uh, I don't like it. The report from New York. Da -da 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 breaking news, we have a, uh, they have a much uglier controller. Except <laughs> this one you can actually detach from the system, so technically there's a superior, I guess. And it looks like uh, a toaster oven, a little bit. Did toaster ovens always have the little glass door on the front? So you that's could watch good, the food be cooked? That's a good question. I want to say yes. Because a lot of people have described the, the NES as looking like a toaster oven. And I'm just like, I guess, but the only ones I've ever seen has a little thing on the front where you can actually watch the food being cooked. Can't you watch your cartridge being cooked as well? I mean, if you're doing like one of those things where they like repair video game things by putting it in the oven, I guess. <laughs> 
blast my my uh, gyro scope. Blast my gyroscope with gamma <laughs> wear craze. Yeah, let's do that. A lot of good ideas on stream tonight. Mm -hmm. Put it in the toaster oven, hell. Put everything in the toaster oven. Yeah, there's something about an animation for the American market. They're making commercials and stuff. I mean, where's the lie? They were doing commercials and stuff. America's looking for feedback, and the Famicom is a system. Okay. <laughs> That's basically what it said, I think. The Famicom is a system. Software review. You heard of this thing? The Hyrule Fantasy Zelda no Densetsu? Never heard of it. I can read some Japanese a little bit. <laughs> take take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, but I do basically get the gist of some things. Yeah, yeah, they needed a little door to conceal the cart. You gotta hide your shame. What the? What? The Zelda report! Okay, since Zelda is on the list already, it's probably been out for a few months, but this seems pretty crass to me. <laughs> Look at this. They reveal the face of the final boss, Ganon, and he says he looks like a damn pig. <laughs> I mean, where's the lie, babe? Buta no Yona. Very rude. Do you know how many people are horny for this guy nowadays? It doesn't matter. Unbelievable. And you, you say he looks like a pig. That deterred no one. What's this over here? some other bullshit happening. Oh, there, there's secrets, apparently. Are there secrets in video games? There's secrets in Zelda. I don't know about other games. I'm not rescuing a single person. Gliok, Patra. This is covering the very end of the game, so this is for the, the expert gamers. Do you think expert gamers are reading the magazine there, or do you think it was only <laughs> Special hit number two! When you get hit, you can look like Santa! <laughs> So this is what magazine coverage was like back then. You had so little to talk about, you're all like, okay, what's the big game? What can we possibly glean from this that hasn't been printed in any other magazine? Look like Santa! I, uh, I mean, that's good news. <laughs> Alex is having a time. I am! I'm having fun with Goonies! Goonies and is... And I'm scared about when, we, when you find, like... Goonies is good. That's why I thought I'd let you play it for a while. Oh, no. I'm scared of the next game. And I guess they may be concluding their coverage because here they just straight up show the ending. And then they have this thing which they show sometimes. It is the soft tenkyoho. So it's like the, the weather report for software. <laughs> uh, no idea what any of these actually mean. If anyone can actually help translate this, it would be helpful. <laughs> Yeah, the gaming weather. It's ranking them by several categories. It's all like, Mania Say? What does that mean if Mania Say gets a, a, a rain cloud? Game Mania is going down the tubes. Oh god, that guy's got a gun. Okay, so this is the rating. It's from Sunshine to Snowman. So the, the rainy cloud is the second worst you can get. Here in, uh, in, in Zogo, this ranks a partly crowdy. Cloudy in, uh, in Aruto. What? I don't, I don't understand. Maybe I should have been a meteorologist, then I would have gotten this shit. You should have been a gamer. Kage no Densetsu. I really want you to play this, but the first level is like nothing but full screen flashes. I may have to wait to cover this on my own stream or something. It's a really good game, though. I like what they do sometimes here. They show these zoomed in portraits of what the sprites looked like. Here they're comparing the original arcade version with the Famicom counterpart. You can see he's a much more lanky boy in the arcade original. The ninjas have a little bit more meat on their bones. They do, they're beefy. The princess is more finely detailed. Though, I don't know. I don't know, this Famicom princess looking pretty good. I think that's superior to the Famicom one, the arcade one. What do you think? Um, I actually really do, I do like the Famicom one more. Yeah. Yeah, see? She has more detail. Mm -hmm. Whoa, whoa, hey! Oh god, don't let Danny control this stream. Got it. That is a recipe for disaster. Did you know, if you play the game long enough, it becomes fall? I did not know that. And then it goes back to spring? This is a three-loop game. If you power up, you get to... You can shoot your shurikens in all the directions. Make sure to shoot the butterflies. Ooh, this one got a snowman in something. In Maniac Appeal, according to 
Mizuno Tencho. It's got a snowman. I kind of love this obtuse, like, rating system. I don't, I don't know. By the time I got into game journalism, they abandoned the whole weather report style rankings, so... It was a little bit after my time. Hey, look at this game. Oh! I've heard of that one. It's, uh, it's Dragon Quest. It's Dragon Quest. That dragon looks cool. DQ1. DQ. That's what I like about Texas. <laughs> This is just a straight-up advertisement for it. It's you got you got the staff listed here. Look, we got the scenario by the guy you love. We got the the monster design by the guy you love. The guy you love, <laughs> Toriyama. Man, did you even listen to the programmer? It's programmed by Chunsoft. You gotta buy it. It's a ROM cartridge, fifty-five hundred yen. Did people buy it? Was it I, was it popular? I think I think they did, Alex. I think Dragon Quest was pretty popular. I it wasn't on the lists, so maybe um maybe it's forthcoming. Maybe this is an ad for the upcoming Dragon Quest. Ooh. So if you saw this ad, you'd be like, oh fuck, it's over. My life as I knew it, it's over. We're gonna buy Dragon Quest, and then we're gonna skip school every time they release a new one. Allegedly. I I wish that would happen in America. I wish. I wish that we Americans would just skip out. Yeah, amazing work. soundtrack by Hatsune Miku. She really outdid herself. Here we have an ad for Portopia Serial Murder Case. What is it? Portopia Rinzoku Satsujin Jiken, I think the original title is. Look at this, it's profiling all the characters using their original pixel art. This is something I've seen a lot in this magazine so far that you didn't typically see in US magazines. They were more about the uh, the image, you know, the art produced for the game, the cover art, perhaps even like original art produced by uh, the magazines like video games and computer entertainment. The bi-weekly family suit just uses the pixel art. It's just like, this is what you're going to see on your screen. We took literal Polaroids of the actual game screen so you can see it. Can you solve the mystery? Can you? Alex, you see this this ad right here? What's this? Uh, that's Door Door! Why don't you play a little bit of that? Yes. I'm bad at Door Door, but I like Door Door. Yeah, they got a good macro camera and they're gonna use it. To be honest, these photos are amazing. You can see the actual picture, the pixels and the scan lines. You don't see the, the flash that, uh, that you get off the screen. Door Door. If this were game players, they would be like, Oh, you can barely see the screen. Okay, so y'all know Door Door? Look at that, for 4,900 yen, you can get this game right now. Really? This game has a door, and also another door. Uh, technically, this, this, stream, this screen is Door 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 Door. Watch this, this is gonna be so good. Oh, this is gonna be sick. No! Oh, no! You got bamboozled! I got... Oh, it was, it was gonna be sick. The Thick Woods Monster. Is that a thing in this game? Watch this. Yeah, that $30 Wrecking Crew looking pretty good right about now. I don't know. Door Door, it's it's cute, but boy. This is, a, this is a game for Alex and not for Danny, if you know what I'm saying. I do know what you're saying. Oh, what's this? This is an ad for Legend of Kage. I love this! This looks like it's American! You know what I mean? So in the game, you get a scroll at some point that causes the screen to flash, big surprise, and it makes all the enemies just drop dead, like he just set out a can of raid for a bunch of ninjas. And I guess this is, uh... <laughs> this is the visual representation of that. This is what it looks like to play Kage no Densetsu. Kage off the shits. I played it as a kid too, and I also called it Legend of Cage, because who Me knew too. better? Normal. It was Legend of Cage. It was Ninja Gaiden. Mm -hmm, it was Ninja Gaiden. We didn't know no better. Come on. Come on, freaks. Come on, freaks. Alright. I got it this time. You see you see this ad, Alex? Is that for Skloon? This is an ad for Skloon. Hmm, should we show off Skloon? Why don't you load up Skloon? Hey, kids. Fill up your closet with water. And you too can experience the thrilling drowning action of Scoon. <laughs> there was also a live action commercial for this that I recommend looking up. Scoon, 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 Scoon. Who's this? Who's their little guy? 
I really had a little oh, guy. Oh, oh, get the uh, get get Rolo for her. Oh. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Killing the orcas. I thought you noticed the uh, the eye and eye rim, which also looks a little suspect. It does. Let's move along from that. This is a game about the sea apocalypse. The the oceans have flooded the entire earth, and you gotta save the humans. And there's aliens or something. Oh yeah, Mr. Taco linked to the original ad. That's definitely a pro watch. You gotta see that shit. So how did I rim market their games? Well, look at this. Sure, this game looks like bullshit, but what if it had a little LED on the cartridge that would light up when you played the game? Wouldn't that make you feel special? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. And it's only 4,900 yen. It's a bargain. It's got an LED and a game. Scooped by Eggplant R.E.M. <laughs> Other games available in the LED uh, series include Zippy Race, Ten Yard Fight, and Spelunker. If you're wondering why Spelunker became so popular, it was at least partially because of the little LED that it had on the cartridge. I love lights too, I'm not immune to that. If I see a, a cartridge with a little blinky light on it, I'm gonna be like, hell yeah, give me that game. It's like kids in the, those light-up shoes. Man, do they... Do they still make light-up shoes? I hope so. They should! D it, everyone, we're bringing back light-up shoes. Oh my god, Alex. What? This is history. Uh-huh. Look, it's coverage of Gradius showing how to power up your ship. Wait, wait, start, start. Hidari, migi, hidari, migi, B, A, start. Oh, hey! Okay, see, you gotta watch out because the orcas will kill the people. It all starts here. There was no Konami code before this issue. This is how it got disseminated. I'm sure it got figured out uh, eventually through other means, but if you were a kid in 1986 and you had Gradius, you'd be like, oh my god, this game's actually playable now. Not to say it's bad, it's just really hard. You wanna try that? Gradius? Yeah. Okay. Why don't you upgrade your shoot 'em up experience from Schoon to Gradius? This is the command. Let's do it. Alright. Okay, so when you start the game, pause and enter the Konami code and unpause. Let's see if you can get it on your first try. Oh, please, I don't remember it. Up, up, down, down. Left, right, left, right. B, A, start. Okay. Alright, go on, Alex. Here we go. Up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right. I did it wrong, didn't I? That's almost, you almost got it. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. Which one of these is B? B is triangle, A is uh, circle. Don't ban Alex, he's trying his best. I did it! Hey, you got it! Look at that! See, you were all banning Alex for nothing. Maybe it gave him strength. You did. Thank you for giving Alex the invisible strength he needed to play Gradius. So usually you'd have to spend a while powering up. Eventually, you may not even get there because, let's face it, shoot 'em ups on consoles were still kind of a novelty at this point. Kids did not have the skill set to really blaze through this just yet. So being able to be almost full power at the beginning of the game is really nice. It is. Let me go. Yeah, you can tell your your bigger brother to eat shit. <laughs> I was gonna say all the haters can bite the big one. Yeah. How do you unredeem Ban Alex? You can never be redeemed. That's okay. I forgive you, my child. God. Uh, there's also a continue code here. There's a continue in this? Push down up B A B A B A B A and you can continue. Who knew? Hey, don't ban me either, I'm perfect. Alright, 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 alright. Alright, alright, alright. That's what I, that's, that's what I, that's, that's my gamer noises. Uh, if you want to know how to warp, this is how to warp from stage one to stage three. And there's a separate method for warping to stage two to stage four. And stage three to stage five, there's three warps in this game. Yeah. So a way to get, um... What the shit is this? Oh, it's how to get bonus points from uh, the the power-up meter. Fucking with that. This is like the best I've ever done, but also... It's because of the code. Yeah, it's because of the code. Oh. You're experiencing that euphoria the kids felt way back when. Sit in place and just blast away and hope I don't die. 
it's like thinner you have to transfer the thing. <laughs> Deacon Deed, thank you, thank you for the the, 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 you. the new sub. I'm just trying to, because these are like tricks I've never heard of before. I know you can uh, do little stunts like this little uh, this little thing here in the Famicom version. You can pass through this to get more points. And Alex beat level one. No, he can't. Alex, these maps may be helpful. Oh, hey! Let's switch to two-page mode to look at these. Look at that. This was a big appeal of these magazines back then. You'd get all the news, you'd get reviews, you'd get uh, opinions from the editors, but also you'd get maps for these games that people were honestly struggling with at the time. Games like Mighty Bomb Jack especially benefited from this. Maybe not so much Gradius. I mean... It's more about the enemy waves than, you know, the rocks in the way. Like, oh man, I didn't know this asteroid was here at the end of level one. I'd have been fucked if not for that. Yeah, rim carts do look really nice. Yeah, that's the thing. Even aside from the, the LED light, the cartridges had a nice molding to them. Sometimes it was just all about the physical presentation of the game, when the, the graphics weren't exactly the best. Here you can see how to get some one-ups. Some one-ups. Uh, one? Yeah, get to the Moai level. And there's another one here in front of the big asteroid. Ugh. This seems maybe unnecessary nowadays, but look at it this way. No smartphones back then. Mm -hmm. And if you're a kid who likes video games, no one's talking about video games except for nerds and magazines. And if there's a magazine where you can pour over it during recess or whatever and think about Gradius, that's like the best thing. It's almost like playing a real video game uh, itself. I think the code only works well at once, Alex. Crud. <laughs> You're well, screwed. You're screwed now. I am. Man, I got Alex to enjoy Gradius. Oops, hang on. Oh, here's a here's a comic representation of the one-up trick. Hey, if you go here next to this asteroid, you get a one-up. And then they're like, why do you get a one-up? I don't know. At the very end is a giant space brain, did you know? I didn't know that. Hey, I'm still doing okay, even though I don't have, like, all the power-ups. Shout out to Alex. Good work, Alex. Good work, Alex. Everyone give Alex a million dollars. Thank you. Hang on. I can do that. No! There we go. Don't ban me! This is where it's revealed. Uh, this is something you may not know if you've only played the US version of Gradius. There's six endings. There's six loops through the game, and each time it tells you a different word at the end. Like here it says Kangeki, and sometimes it's all like superlative or something like that. So if you think you've beaten Gradius, you haven't unless you've played through it six times in a row. Get to it. Okay. What playthrough are you on right now? One. Okay, good start, good start. Okay. Hey, Alex! Yeah? How would you like to play this next game? There's a game called Makai Mura. You heard of it? Okay! Time for Danny to own Alex. Oh, repeatedly. this is gonna be good. Make sure you look at this map. You see here, um, there's like, uh, there's a zombie. Uh-huh. And uh, if you go here, there's a couple more zombies. There's a red devil up at the end. You want to be careful of that guy. Got it. Yeah, Little Hell Town before Big Hell Town. Big Bill's Big Big Bill Hell's Hell Town. Here we go. Wow, that sprite looks like shit. Did we just get two simultaneous donations? Thank you, Sephisai, and also Frappe for the five dollar donations. Thank you. Hey. I, I was nude. I'm not now. Oh, this sucks ass. You like this game? <laughs> you just started, Alex. <laughs> yes, I had this game as a kid. Do I need to turn this down? This game's a little shrill. Probably should just be nice. My mom still calls me up sometimes and remembers the, the games I would play, and she'd be like, what was that one you always played that went da 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 And I'm like, oh my god, mom, I'm so sorry. She has it memorized because of you. You had to listen to literally 4,000 hours of the level 1 theme from this game, because I was a little kid and I never beat level 2. Yeah, Arthur's a little bit blombie in this version. Everything's a bit blombie. This is from the infamous Micronics. They made a very bad port of this game, in case you weren't uh, aware. God, that red armor. When I got, oh, I don't want 
like this. I got the fire. Is that good or bad? I think it's bad. Uh, some speedrunners like the fire. Okay. I'm enjoying this. I'm just eating this up like it's like it's like it's delicious Danny's dinner. Christmas watching me uh, <laughs> watching me ride the fail train here. Oh yeah, they even added extra typos, so that that weird ending is specifically in the NES version. <laughs> Thanks, Micronics. The thing is, I don't see the the point of mapping out areas like this because there's a checkpoint right here, and you could just literally beat this on your first try. Or even if it took you five or six tries, it would take you like one minute. And yet here they took the the effort to piece together all these different screens for. There's a one up here. Really? Are you educating yourself now? Well, fuck me. Everything I said was wrong because this has a purpose. This taught me there was a one up here. Ah, uh, this guy. There's a Yashichi here. I knew about that. Yeah, Micronics. <laughs> Thinking of the needs of the American gamer. There's armor up here if you need it at the big house. I want to go to the. I want to go to a big house. You know why it's <laughs> called the big house? Because it's filled with big men. I I thought it was okay. This character's name in the Japanese version is Dai Otoko, which means just big man. And I think they even translated it that way in the U.S. Ooh, big man. Big dude. Look at the items you can get. You can get a king, or you can get my favorite item in the game that's not in the arcade version, the mysterious frog king, the Kaidu king, where instead of giving you a shit ton of bonus points and an extra life, it turns you into a frog. I like that. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Wait, there's three Yashichis? Did everyone know this? Yes. Were y'all holding out on me? Three distinct Yashichis, all with different effects? This one gives you 5,000 points, this one gives you more time. This one takes it away? Cool. Man, maybe this game's sick. There's a lot more hidden shit in this game than there was in the arcade version. You I remember that, the goblins walking across the walking across the air. Hmm, the famous Yashi Cheese. Enemy profiles, we got the red armor. We got the Poochie Devils, also known as the Petite Devils, the Flying Knights, you know them. I do. I'm doing pretty good for only being Whoa, God! No, I'm not. I'm not doing good at all. I'm fail. You're fail? I'm fail! I like these magazines, too, because you can learn the names of the enemies. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't know that unless it was in the manual, and sometimes even the manuals don't have that. So you can learn that the bats are called, uh, bat... Komori. This one, you know what this guy's called in Japan? He's called Zombie. Isn't that crazy? That's a little, that's very interesting. Yeah, here's, here's Dai Otoko, in case you didn't believe me. <laughs> Just big men. The green monster. If you were to guess what the ghost was called, what would your guess be? Obake. That's a really good choice, and shows more vocabulary than I thought you knew. <laughs> <laughs> No, Alex, of course the ghost is called a woody pig. Of course. Woody pig. Don't no. eat me! I got it. And then it's all like bat, tower monster, zombie, woody pig. Yeah, alright. Let's have enemy namer Jeff. <laughs> Think of a fucked up enemy name for this one. Alex, why don't you play some super Chinese? I had some super Chinese last week. A lot of places you can get uh, super Chinese nowadays. Yeah! So this is called Ninja Brothers in... Oh. Um, oh no, I was wrong. The sequel is called Little Ninja Brothers. This first one is called Kung Fu Heroes. And you look at this and you think, man, this sure is a 1986 Famicom game. Yeah. <laughs> it has all the detail you can muster on the, the Famicom at the current point in time. The fucked up thing is, when we got it over here in the States, it was 1989. And those three years meant a lot. Because <laughs> the way I got Kung Fu Heroes was through a, a bargain bin at KB Toys. Rest in peace, guys. Bring them back. Should we? Jackie and, um, 
the other one? Oh, I meant KB Toys, but yeah, Super Chinese too. Oh, okay. Bring back KB Toys. Bring back the little ninja brothers. Bring it all back. Yeah, that was the case with Hydlide too. That's that's been a misunderstanding by a lot of people because people played Hydlide in 1989 and they were like, "What the fuck? Zelda kicks this game's ass." But the the reality is that it came out on computers in 1981, at which point it was the greatest game of all time. It's all a matter of perspective. Wow. Here's a back view of the uh, the unicorn monster. Mmm. <laughs> Bye haters. No, don't kill me. No, I died. Hey, check out this monster ass. Yo! Look at all those pixels. That's a lot of pixels. It's looking, looking kind of nice. <laughs> What's his name? Unicorn. Unicorn. What's up? Oh, culture brain. Even, even in the context of a magazine trying to make sense of this game, it still doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There's like, um, there's Kung Fu Commandos. There's Dragon Men. Alex, rate this Dragon Man. Um, three out of five. The snout makes a little heart. Okay, four out of five. Okay, there we go. I do not have a degree from the Micro Academy, sorry. Some people have degrees from the Macro Academy, but that's neither here nor there. Dragon Quest. Not my face. No, don't kill me. I'm good boy. Yeah, it was a dragon with an elephant nose. I don't, I don't know what their approach to character design really was. This seems to be an interview, or maybe some kind of back and forth about the upcoming Dragon Quest, available soon for fifty-five hundred yen. I did it, Danny! I did it. You did it. I did it. You beat level one. I beat level one of a video game for children. Freaking nice. All right, we're. Wow, this game is so early in the, the magazine coverage that they're all like, Hey, uh, the best we can do is give you a list of all the items and how much they cost. <laughs> hey, Ice Monster. Yeah, I had Kung Fu Heroes too. I played it a lot as a kid. It was $15. $15! You know how easy it is to talk your parents into buying a $15 game? Pretty easy. Pretty easy, turns out. Okay, see you around, Electric Boogaloo. See ya. Let's, um... What else is there in here about Dragon Quest? The old Drakwe. More lists. Oh! Here we have a new dragon. Man, not two pages later, this dragon just completely kicks the other dragon's ass. Yeah, this is a 5 out of 5 dragon. No notes. Perfect. That is a, a classic Akira Toyama dragon right there. You cannot compete with that. Dragon men of Kung Fu Heroes. Oh yeah, Namcot published this for some reason. I guess at this point, Culture Brain didn't have their own uh, Japanese publishing house or something. Look at all these enemies here. Well, I'm looking at all these enemies here. And super Chinese. Man, I wish I wish I was a metal slime right now so I could beat it up with exper for experience. Hey, I'm getting good at super Chinese. You ever wish that that happened? Like, you went outdoors one day and there was a metal slime there? You'd be like, ah, yes, free experience. And then you just get to rest for the rest of the day. Yes. Wish that's how it worked. Yeah, scan line's looking a little funky on some of these, but still very clear. Alex? You have important... You have an important duty to do I right see. now. The Namcot thing, I think, I remember reading that uh, they asked around at some point, because uh, this was in modern times. They asked around their, their few employees that have been around since the 80s, and their official answer was, I don't know. <laughs> the official answer is a shrug. Imagine a week of bird. A bird week, if you will. This is a game by Linar, who later made Deadly Towers. I think this is a way better game, though. Yeah, fuck yeah, Bird Week. This is a game about being a mama bird. You gotta go feed your baby birds back at the nest. And this is secretly one of the hardest Famicom games ever released because there's like 40 fucking levels and there's no continues. If you're looking for the ultimate challenge, it's not Makamura, it's not Dragon Quest, it's Bird Week. It is challenging. Yeah, yet another game with a prominent bird bomb character. 
I think that's the trend that needs to come back before video games can truly be uh, revitalized. Hey, my, baby's, my baby's leaving the nest. Good job! You're a successful bird mom. Do they really only give this one page? Are you kidding me? It's bird week! Well, my other baby's leaving. It's beautiful! Don't you, don't you see the beauty inherent in this? I say futilely clicking on the OBS window. <laughs> Look at this! But please, God! Top 10 video game bird moms. Number 10. Uh, the Bird Week Mom. This mom helps out three chicks at a time. Last time I was with three chicks, I, uh, uh number 9. I was gonna say, Danny, are you G4? <laughs> no, I'm Screw Attack. Okay. Did you hear? No. There's gonna be a Super Mario Brothers 2? If you looked at the uh, FTS release list back there, there was only eight games available for it out of a top ten list. And so people are really, really looking forward to Super Mario Bros. 2, suffice, suffice to say. Space Dumpster, thank, thank for the 36 months. Oh shit, thank you! Three whole years of bird. Uh, a, a bird three years. Here we get to see rumors like Luigi plays differently. Mario News! Luigi gay? <laughs> That would be cool if there was a video game tabloid. <laughs> Bird mom gay? <laughs> ah, my babies are gonna die. I'm sorry, everybody. What's the news here? This is Super Mario Brothers. Um... I'm sorry, babies! Oh, I wish I could read. I'm sorry, babies! <laughs> One. Well, that's the thing. Uh, in the context of this game's release in Japan in 1986, think of the competition. Hatori-kun, uh, Gegege no Kitaro. In that context, this game is a whole lot better than the context we got it in here in the States, which was just a bonus game in Super Mario All-Stars. At, th at that point, it was just like, oh, cool, a bonus game. This is horrible to play, but I'll play it anyway. I did it. Nice! Did you beat level 2 of Bird Week? Yeah! Holy fuck! Let's have a Bird Week competition. Okay. Are we competing? Oh. Okay. Here we have your complete guide to Schoon. There's eight scenes in Schoon. There's phase 1, phase 2, phase 3. Egypt? Oh yeah, you go to Egypt! There's pyramids! Wow, look at this! There's England? You have to go to India? Hawaii? Phase 1 is in Hawaii? And then I guess there's a New York level, too. Man, there's a whole... there's a whole world of Schoon. Flying Squirrel killed me. Oh, right, and here's the, um... a prominent look at the title screen mermaid, of course. Bird killed me. Who is this lady? We all want to know. Uh, we can probably surmise that she is Christian. That's about all we know about her, though. Hey! Here's the enemies of Schoon, in case you wanted a close-up. Okay, uh, the orca is technically, it's not an enemy of you, but it will eat, it will hang out around you and eat the people who are, you're supposed to save. Oh, it's Same, it's a shark. Oh, it's, never mind. It's not a killer whale at all. I thought they were killer whales, too. Oh yeah, what's study game? Instead, why don't you play this game? What's this? This is, um... Musashi no Ken, I think it is. Wait, no, this isn't. This is 53 Stations of the Tokaido. It's, um, fucking... Yeah, yeah, go look up Tokaido, whatever. Man, yeah, 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 you gotta play this. You gotta play this shit. Okay. Oh, that? damn it, what's the actual title? Let me, let me look this up. Tokaido Goju Sansugi 53 Stations. I don't know why it's not in there. Uh, yes. 
it's not here. here. I'll try to find it. Okay. Your babies are dying. Yeah. In the background. <laughs> Perhaps it will be in here. No! Why? Why, God? What kind of God would let this happen? Unbelievable. Oh well. Kanshaku, Tamege, Kanshaku, that's the. Yeah, that's what it begins with. This is such a confusing title. Found it. Thank you, Chat. Thank you, Luar. Yeah, thank you for that. Oh man. Have you ever played this one? Uh huh. But I know it from, uh. This is on an episode of Game Center CX yeah. and was recently covered in Platform Geddon. The only time I've ever seen this game beaten by a human was uh, when Dot Level did it a few weeks ago. This game is so long and it is so difficult. There's no continues. You get very little in the way of attacks. That one attack you have, that's the one you have through the whole game. You just throw fireworks at people. Now this coverage tells you about all the different people you can meet, all the different items you can get. You can get a sword, you can get a coin, uh, mm -hmm. other stuff. Use it to fight these guys. It's not actually 53 stages, it's something like 24 or 25 stages. And I'm not doing the sing-along, sorry. I don't know the lyrics. He died. In the, in the manual for this game, there was a series of lyrics printed for the, uh, the theme song. And I think they were featured in the Game Center CX episode. They were. That one guy tried to sing a little bit too high. Oh yeah, here's all the enemies you get to. I got, I got, I got stabbed. These various characters are why you need the different items you see at the top of the screen. Like you can fend off the tea house lady by giving her a coin or something. Mm, okay. And then the thief, you give him a sword. The ghost lady, there's something else you need for her. Cigarettes. Yeah, cigarettes. <laughs> That's what all the ladies want, cigarettes. Gotta smoke, they say. This is where you can get a one-up. <laughs> you can get a one-up in level two if you bomb this place. Okay, I'm gonna try it. And if you get really good and you collect ten coins, as you see in the screenshot here, various warp zones start to appear. So that's the secret to this game, getting the warp zones, uh, getting the extra lives especially, there's a trick for that. Real tough game. Not for the faint of heart. Did Sunsoft love the lady who uh, clings to you in this game? Did she become like a meme? That wouldn't surprise me. Watch out! Dog. I like the dog. Watch out for dog. Bullshit. Whoa. Watch out for scroll wheel. I died in a bullshit way. Fail. No, every death is fair in this game. He just... Don't do that. Leave me alone. You ever wanted a map for a vertically scrolling shooter? No. I mean, maybe. <laughs> Look, I it just, is. I don't play shooters, so... Star Soldier Stage 1. All the stuff mapped out. We got a we got a comic down here. Oh, I wish I knew what that said. He's saying something like, "Oh, it's bad. Your timing's not good." I think he's trying to get the secret bonus or something. You got to have good timing to destroy things uh, simultaneously. Yeah, this issue is just full of influential stuff. It's got Gradius. It's got Goonies. It's got Star Soldier. This is where all the big games were at that time. Additional maps, in case you want those. On sale, June 20th. New Soft? We're retro pals, we don't want New Soft. Is it good? Well, new, in, games? new in 1986, uh, King's Knight. No, thank you. How about Super Pitfall? It's an RPG. <laughs> How can you get away with calling Super Pitfall an RPG? That's really mean. <laughs> Terra Cresta? That do anything for you? Uh, what else we got? What else are you gonna make me play? Uh, the game that would eventually be released is Namida no Sokoban. Are you making me 
play Sokoban. I'm not gonna make you play Sokoban. It's okay, you can make me play Sokoban. It's on FDS, is the thing. It's okay, kind of never a, mind. I'm not loading that shit a big pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. We have Cosmo Genesis, and why don't you try this last game here? This game called Layla. Because if you notice, if you're a Layla super fan, she looks nothing like she does in the final game. What's up with this? Is this like a super early version of Layla? Alright, let's see what Layla looks like. Yeah, prove that I'm right. Make me look cool. This game's got jams, I guess? There she is! Is that what she looks like? I think they, they changed her a little bit, didn't they? The super early look at Layla. <laughs> Here's what we got. We got a character named Layla. It's in a cave, and there's crates. What, what more do you need to know? Just buy the game. She does look cooler in the beta. That's such a cool outfit. This game's neat. We should stream it sometime. We should. It is kind of a proto-Metroidvania in that at the end of some level segments, you either go up or go down in an elevator, so it has branching paths in a way. Oh, and now we come to the back pages, which we're going to skim over. Uh, the final pages in many Famitsu issues were, like, on cheaper quality paper with uh, less color depth. So it was basically like the newspaper section. Occasionally you'd see illustrations and stuff, but mostly it was just wall-to-wall -wall text. Konami, eh? This is me. This is a common problem with me. You, uh, just bats? Yeah, just bats following me around. I was gonna say, that that's a very Austin problem to have. There's just so many bats here. Uh, talking about Darwin 4078, which I think was an arcade game. Oregon no Shiro, which is a Taito arcade game, I think. This is basically just, like, given bits of information about current arcade games at the time. Okay. And then, of course, Gradius down here. I like this game's music. What is going on here? Y'all! Hey! You cut that out! So help me God. You're gonna turn this magazine around? This is a God-fearing magazine. <laughs> here we have a comic, in case anyone wants to try to understand that. What the fuck? This is a comic about getting inside the Xerox machine or something? Oh wait, no, it's about in getting inside a cocktail cabinet. I can only imagine what happened between panels 3 and 4. It don't look good for that guy. Hey, you need to kill a snowman? Here's a great way to do it. Hey, that's a really helpful good housekeeping tip. This is what I'm gonna do if I meet Jack Frost. <laughs> he ho no. I don't like that there are three Jack Frosts. By which the way. which one were you referring to? I was thinking of the one with uh, what is it, Bruce Willis? <laughs> no, it's, it was um. Not Harrison Ford. You know what I mean. <laughs> the guy from Multiplicity. Um. Oh, oh, who was it? Michael, Michael Keaton. Keaton. Thank, Thank you. you. Meanwhile, I was thinking of the horror movie Jack Frost. So we were all on the the, the different pages there. Good old Michael Keaton. Yes, ass. That's the one I was thinking of. I watched that movie at least twice. They kill a kill a guy with a very slowly moving snow sled. It's very okay, funny. That's cool. Ha! I don't like where this is leading. What's on the facing page? That's enough of that. Let's get out of here. Thanks for not making me play. Oh god. Unbelievable. Even in the pages of this magazine, I am not safe. This is a regular section of the magazine called the Famicom Sushin Ososumi Media, or the uh, our currently recommended media for nerds. This is where they recommend books and movies that are tangential to video games. What are they recommending here? This is like... Shadow, Tori Day, Ma'o. I think this is a book of some sort. Oh yeah, 450 yen. That's a book. Oh I went to God. heaven. I want to buy this book. Yo, what is that book? This is uh, the Shadow Guy. Remember, um, what does this remind me of? Sleepy Hollow? <laughs> yes! Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It's the head 
headless horseman, yeah. but gamer. The headless gamer. Headless horseman, but Tim Burton and a gamer. Recommended video. What's this? What's this week's recommended video? Attack of the Killer Tomato. Yes, that's what? great. Great oh, movie. Is, look at the poster they gave it. What the fuck? Fantastic. Arg in quotes. Is that from a critic or? <laughs> I wonder if that did well in Japan. News information on Tokyo Disneyland. Wow! Wow! 86, so it's already open and everything! Donald Duck is 52 Kaime... uh, something. 50, he's doing the 52 stations of the, of the Hokkaido? <laughs> yes! Donald Duck doing the 53 stations of the Tokaido. Making the journey on foot himself in that heavy suit. Very demanding of the poor actor inside the suit. Oh, he's 52 years old is what it's saying. Yeah, it's celebrating Donald I, Duck's I, 52nd I, birthday. Along with Mickey Mouse, whose age is undisclosed. Donald suck! Come on. Who said that? Banned. I think we said that before. Okay, we did actually say call him Donald suck. New product. What is it? Cartridge. Is that a cleaner? Oh, so Yeah, I think it's <laughs> some kind of cleaner for your cartridges. Even in 1986, kids were blowing in those cartridges trying to get them to work. It's talking about Beishi Kun's anime. Beishi Kun is their very short lived mascot. You see him here. He was on the front. Cover. Oh, the sweaty guy! Yes. Why did you get rid of him? I, I don't know. No, no possible reason I can think of. The lady who's really happy to have a Famicom, and she's like thinking of fruit. Yeah, I like the Famicom, and I like strawberries, I like grapes, I like lemons, I like banana, I like uh, watermelon, I like peach, I like apple. Melons? Melons are good. She's just reading from a book. Maybe she doesn't know what the fruits are actually called. She has to have a cheat sheet. <laughs> That's the first ping tuber, yeah. How to use that as an alt. And my favorite fruit, rock. Okay, Here we have... Oh my god, this is so precious. In the later years of the Famicom, the monthly release schedule schedule was insane. There was literally 40 or 50 games coming out every month. Look at this. You gotta wait a whole week to play the new games that are coming out. What do we got on the 6th? We got, uh, I think that's Famicom Detective Club or something. Oh, that's, uh, wait a minute. Oh, these are... No, wait, I was right. Star Soldier's coming out. Uh, new game from Capcom's coming out. Super Chinese coming out on the 19th. Uh, clear your plans on that Thursday. Got it. And that's it. This is what the Famicom release schedule looked like in June of 1986. Do you think they knew? Do you think they knew at this point that, like, even two years after this point, there would be, like, dozens and dozens of do dozens of games filling up a list that looks like this? I wonder, because, like, what was its competition at the time? Like, the Mark III? The, uh, the MSX? And we have new technology. CD player! Whoa, CDs! It's like the music comes on a CD. Cool! I like that guy. You can get a radio-controlled car. Walkmans! These things were big. They were. They kids, were. Kids don't understand the appeal of the Walkman. You could get yourself a, a VCR. <laughs> or VHS video, as they call it for some reason. Look! It's got a Famitsu sticker on it so you don't steal it. Property of Famitsu staff. How many people do you think try to steal it? A lot of people, probably. There was an article! Did you see? There's an article going around today about all the different ways Nintendo tried to bolt down their hardware to keep journalists from stealing it. Uh-uh. For whatever reason, they would just... They, there was this guy who, when he got the Wii U at his desk, he was all like, Okay, I signed like a billion NDAs. I'm not going to steal this thing or report on anything you don't want me to report it to. And they literally flew a guy from Washington to New York to try and bolt the system to his desk at his job. 
he came in there with bolts and like a screwdriver and stuff. Is like, okay, ready to uh, install this Wii U on your desk so you don't steal it. And the guy was like, fuck no, go fly back. And he did. <laughs> that is... I love copyright. Nintendo is just like... For the Wii U is the thing. Like, you're gonna permanently damage your office, de office desks just for the fucking Wii U. This thing's gonna be dead in a year. These guys look pretty happy. Beishi looks pretty happy. Okay, can I defeat this guy? We have merch including shirts. The ASCII stick, look at this. That would have been nice to have. The official Famitsu guitar pick. I did it! Holy, Holy shit. shit! Nice! You beat level one of Layla. Layla. Sorry, I, I don't mean to keep it just... Do you remember in the 90s where they wouldn't stop doing the Eric Clapton Unplugged CD commercials of Layla? Yeah. And it was just unescapable, this freaking... Layla. That wasn't even... It was like he was part of a band. He was in Derek and the Dominoes. That's not Eric... Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting pissed off at it 40 years from when Hell it first yeah. happened. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I hated the Eric Clapton... Uh, renaissance of the 90s. Yeah. Just total bullshit. Some grudges never fade. And the thing was, if it had Splatoon on the Wii U, I'd be like, okay, go ahead and ruin my desk. But no, it was like Nintendo Land. Fuck that. Here's Nazo no Murasame Joe. That's an FDS game. I'm not gonna make Alex play it, because that's a little complicated. But there's maps, look! This is one of them open-ended games, where the perspective is like Zelda, so you actually do kind of need a map. Especially helpful later on because the maps get more maze like. And you gotta find the fake princess and the real princess. Is this linking together the various teleportation? No, wait, it's just marking the, the items on the map, I see. Oh, the Sonic 1 prototype got yanked. <laughs> Damn, that's a shame. He took it and he ran off with it, and he's gonna sell it for a billion dollars probably someday. I wish... I wish I was that guy. Don't you ever wish you became known as the guy who stole, like, a prototype of Shadow the Hedgehog from E3? I mean, that's... <laughs> there are worse things to be known as, that's for sure, I guess. God, these maps are ridiculous. This game gets hard, in case you never played through it. I haven't. It is nuts. I stole the good version of Ta Sonic 2006. Yeah, they had to start over. It was a food fight situation. Is <laughs> <laughs> that a Blu-ray re Blu release of Food Fight? I don't think so. I don't think it's on Food... On, I don't think it's on Food Ray, I was about to say. <laughs> oh, man. Good lord, look what you're in for at the end of the game. No, I don't want to be in for that. Hey, here's the last level. <laughs> God. Yeah, how do we not own Food Fight? We have to own it in some form. Oh yeah, the last boss looks really cool in this game. Few people have seen him, though. Oh, this is still Nazo. And here's the ending. If you can't get to the ending, here's the credits. the trash. Can I bring back you, Go Girl? Do you think the time is right to bring back you, Go Girl? I don't know. I've been thinking about it. How about... How about we bring it back as you, Go Gert? <laughs> you, Go Gert! Mm -hmm. That way we bring back a beloved yogurt brand. Is, did did Go Gert go away? Did Go Gert go? Wow, the earliest Sonic with Madonna in it. <laughs> His girlfriend. Nice. Oh, we're already making new brandings for it. It can, it can be spelled U-G-O, girl. You go Gert. Go Gert is now Went Gert. <laughs> Come on, that's a Danny level joke. You can do better than no, that. No, that's good. No way. Gert. Pokemon Go Gert to the polls. <laughs> I think this is... What is this doing? This is trying to tell you not to misspell the, the words you write down or something? Yeah. Don't do that. Okay. Hey, Alex, I found you. That is me! I love that hat. Such I a need cool a cool hat. hat. There was a lot more Famicom hats around back then. 
The only cool hat I have now is a beanie. I need a cooler hat. No! Layla, okay. Oh, there's that thing they showed in the, the table of contents. Let's go. Look at this. I love the little, the, I love this. It's a personal chest. It's got these interlocking mechanisms here. You can probably lock it with a key for God's sake. You got pockets for the, the cartridges. You can put a little TV in there. And of course the Famicom itself, which has a uh, twin bee in it. Nice. Does it come with a little... Look, it is... That... Mm. It exists! The it's Famicom baseball hat. I'm beside myself. I need this. How can I get this? Point me to an eBay auction on it, and also please tell me it's only $10. That's all I can afford. What the hat? Look at this guy. Who do you think this guy is? Um, I think that guy uh, designed the hat. Konkai Miyake Yuji san. Yuji Miyake? No Tojo. I see, I see. Mm. So they did invent the hat, okay. Can we get to see his hands-on experience with this? Is this a celebrity thing? Is this an R&B guy? Hey, I found you again. Yo! I love them, it's like Psyduck. Did you know there's a real animal that's exactly like Psyduck? No way! No, 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 no there's not. It's called a platypus. Wait, so platypuses are psychic and get migraines? Yeah, they're poison too, which is not even something Psyduck does. So real life platypuses are better than Psyduck. Yeah. Look, dead end. Goodbye. <laughs> you having a good time playing Layla? Yeah, what are you gonna make me play next time? Game's not too bad. I always kind of liked it. I like Layla, yeah. Is this, um... Is this telling you where to... <laughs> is this just like a, a hidden item search throughout Famicom games? This is a shot from Makaimura. This is, I don't know, this is the, the Dig Dogger from Zelda no Densetsu. Also known as the Legend of Zelda if you're not a nerd. This is the uh, spear thrown by the Woody Pigs, you know them. Some of this feels like uh, highlights for children, you know? Mm -hmm. It's all like, where did you see these items in your video games? Top middle is Goonies. Yeah, that looks right. That could be an orb thing from Deadly Towers. That game had a lot of prominent orbs, yes. I'm becoming an expert at Layla. Cool. How long have I been playing Layla? There's a ball from Circus Charlie, a bomb from Mighty Bomb Jack. Wizard Fire from Tower of Juraga. They just really needed to fill time, didn't they? Yeah, I think this is a magazine for me. <laughs> if, if I was in Japan in 1986, I would love the shit out of this magazine. But nowadays, this is me. Grandma Gamer. Grandma? Yeah. I remember back when I played video games. I still play them, I say. Sleepy. More stuff. Is this like gamer gear? Joy pad something. Family key got a. Uh... God, I can't even begin to tell you what a lot of this stuff is. Good art. Good art. I'm watching a Layla speedrun take shape in the background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like I'm this. Layla. I'm learning. Here we have some Beishi comics. There's this guy. Look at him, he's, sweat, sweat, he's sweating sweat at a video guy. game. <laughs> oh no, why did I put Mario in the pit? Is he screaming? Because I tend to do that. Maybe you shouldn't put Mario in the pit. Wrong. But, but it's what I do best. <laughs> I'll be your princess. <laughs> That's That took a turn I didn't expect. Alright. Good. I support it. Support the ship. Sweaty guy and other guy. S sweaty guy and other sweaty guy. 
Special secrets for Dig Dug 2. If you do this, you can select a level. Was this a prize given away? You get 5,000 yen and some Famitsu tickets, whatever those are. Sweet deal. I want that. Well, you gotta find secrets in Dig Dug 2. In fact, why don't you get on that right now? You can, beat, Dig Dug 2? you can beat this boss first if you want. Okay, thank you. I don't think I've ever seen this far in Layla. Oh, this is still the first level boss. Oh, I, okay. I died. Well, then start up Dig Dug 2. No, no, let me, let me try again with this guy, please. <laughs> okay. No, don't make me play Dig Dug 2. Hey, I did great. Did you see how quickly I beat that boss? Yeah, it was good. Okay, now I'll play Dig Dug 2. You could do even better at Dig Dug 2. Oh, man. Okay, that's fine. Better for worse through Dig Dug 2. Sweaty and Wetty, those aren't their names. Who said that? I, they're gonna... No, Krongling. They will remain anonymous. Okay. More tips for Zelda. This is how to beat the red Aramur in Makaimura. Okay. If you hit him once and then scroll off the screen, he disappears, did you know? I just saw the phrase Super Moist Brothers. Did you see that? That was amazing! Wow! Wow! <laughs> Give me a million dollars! Super Moist Brothers. B-Wings. There's tips here. A whole page dedicated to tips for B-Wings. Oh, wrong one. Wow, look at this. This is history right here. Oh my god! I know this! Yeah, you know this. This is how to solve the Nagoya room in Atlantis no Nazo. You may be able to figure that out on your own. The, the keyword is... It, it indicates how many bombs to throw. You gotta do like seven, five, and eight or something. And there's like... What is this? What is this? What is this? Oh no, this is still B-Wings from the previous page. Oh, okay. I got really confused. There's some more secrets. You can get a warp zone. Dragon Quest things. How to beat Ninja Hattori-kun. Good luck, asshole. There's some good art. Aww. Isn't that nice? Dragon Quest? Mm-hmm. Aww. No Bake no Kyutaro. Gegege no Kyutaro. Argus. Goonies. Wow, look at his wide pants. Yeah, that's some Jinko shit. <laughs> yeah, you get the Jinko's power up. <laughs> Dude, I gotta play more Goonies. This is him in a skirt that says skirt. I think these may be uh, doctored images, come to think of it. <laughs> There's a fart attack, apparently. Okay. All right, guys. I believe you. Yeah, there's the Onada attack. Cool. <laughs> oh, man. I don't even know if this is real or not. Can you give Mikey a skirt? Is it possible? Please give Mikey a skirt. Will I beat round four? Will you? I'm watching history in the making. I know you're not. You're not. <laughs> okay. More B-Wings, more Mad Max. More other games, more Gyrodyne. Mighty Bomb Jack. Here's the layouts of all the bonus levels. Oh, it's just them uh, putting different sprites in the environment. I see. It's like uh, Mario's famous gold balls. You know, right, Alex? Danny. Alex knows what I'm talking about. I do know about the gold balls. Mighty Bomb Jack the comic? Wow. It's instructional, too. It tells you how to open the treasure chests. Okay. This is how you retain information through manga. I mean, I do retain info better when it's in comic form. Oh my god, it's Circus Charlie the comic. No. Wow. Circus Charlie, of all people, gets his own comic. That's a good lion. Yo, he says. Oh my god, it's Mikey. Oh, Mikey looks cute! Mm hmm.
Man, I love this art. Got Packland. Packland, nowhere to be seen on the top 20 list. I think this disappeared a long time ago. Maybe people just didn't like the Famicom port of that. It was a Bomb Jack comic, too. Yeah, they showed him kicking the rat. Yeah, look at that. Look at him go. Your primary action in that game is rat kicking. We have an interview with someone showing you proper <laughs> Famicom controller techniques. Look, it's the claw grip. You're going to need this for Monster Hunter. Oh my Hunter. god, it's the claw grip. You can also do this. Various techniques, you know. I'm noticing... With there being so few games to cover, they have to cover ancillary stuff like controller techniques, interviews with celebrities, various things around the world of video games. What the fuck, dude? What the fuck? <laughs> what? You can't. You can't yes, do you that. Can. No. Yes, that that's is, normal. That technically qualifies as being tool assisted. <laughs> this fucking cockamamie bullshit device you've made. <laughs> What's, what's it made of? Like those little plastic rulers that he just cut a bunch of those in half and then it just goes pop, 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 pop. You should make one of those. I should. Out of knives. I got, I got attacked because I thought I saw a cat in the corner and I got really excited. What are these guys up to? Excuse me! That's a fan! The kid hooked up his dad's electric power drill to the device in order to power the device and also the fan to keep mom cool. That's a considerate kid. Me, I just made my mom listen to the Ghosts and Goblins team for 4,000 hours. I'm sorry. I, just, I hate to look at every single thing in this issue, but <laughs> really... Oh no, I resized the chat. Fuck. We're fine. I like the guy whose arms are flailing. Yeah, that's basically you. Mm -hmm. We're almost through the very first issue. What do we think of it? I like it. I think it's amazing. Here you can get some of these uh, Famitsu tickets. Often these are printed in the back. You just clip them out and save them for a rainy day. Man, if money looked like this, I would use money more. <laughs> but then, you know what? We wouldn't be all using our debit cards. Yeah. We wouldn't be having the credit crisis. We'd all be using Famitsu tickets. Oh, I've seen this. Check out this ad. Look at this shit. Oh, that? What is that for? Do you want to play this game? Yeah, yeah. Why don't you check great. it out? It's a game called Cosmo Genesis. Yeah, like, this is amazing. There's so much detail. All the different, wow, look at this! All the different computer parts. The various, uh, I like the overlay, which looks a whole lot like the game itself. <laughs> that dashboard is a little high. They have to crane their necks to look up all at right, it. Alright, let's go! Cosmo Genesis! Alright, I already like it. Yeah, Cosmo Genesis Evangelion. <laughs> you were gonna be so disappointed. This was released in the U.S. as Star Voyager by Acclaim. So Acclaim thought it was good enough for them to release. And what it is is that it's one of the few Famicom games to just be a straight-up rip-off of Star Raiders for the 2600. That being uh, a space game where you warp, warp from point to point and get in dogfights and stuff. So the game itself, you look at it and you think, why did anyone buy this? This is shit. This fucking sucks. This is why people bought it. This, this freaking ad that makes it look amazing. And it's just enough like the game to make it look so tantalizing, you see? And then you get to the game and it's just, ugh. You get to the game and it's just, ugh. The story of, that's the story of the Famicom. Are we at the end of this? I think we're finally at the end of this godforsaken issue. Nope, there's more Sokoban. There's Sokoban and it's coming to Famicom Disk System. There's nothing you can do about it. Hey everybody, did anyone order, order a load of Sokoban? I did! I did! You were the one. Yes. Yeah, the warehouse game. Castle Excellent! Alex? Thank you. Let's see how excellent this castle is. Hey, 
Excellent. Open the door! What did they call this when they released it over here? Castle Quest? I think so. Yeah, they did two things when they brought this over to the States. Uh, they retitled it Castle Quest, and you see how Alex has three lives? In the US version, you have 50 lives. And of course, it's a one-hit death game. <laughs> From uh, the same time period and the same developers is a game called Bokoska Wars, which is why it kind of looks and plays like this. This is me, Hamikon, he says. That's called Famicon, dumbass, is what she says. Alright, I got him. She's like, why don't you play it right? So he goes, okay, and he plays it upside down. It goes pew, pew, pew. Okay. Back up. Here's another way you can play. You can bend backwards. You can bend over the TV like a cat. You can twist yourself up in knots. You can... That looks really uncomfortable. That looks really uncomfortable. Oh, jeez. I like this ergonomics. I don't want to be in any of these positions while I play Famicom games. Oh, he's looking in a mirror for this. Weird, he's looking at himself while he does this. <laughs> that just makes it even worse. Remember that scene from Bright Hands and Games? <laughs> Pasokong games. There aren't just console games, there are also computer games. One of them is Xanadu. Oh, the soft log top, top 20. How many of these do I know? 1986, June. The top PC games for Japan include Hide Light 2. Uh, Xanadu, Goonies, I guess that's the MSX version of that, Toriton, no idea what that is, um, Merhin Vale by System Sa- Mis System Sacom, let's go! System Sacom in the top five with- Alright, what is it? With Merhin Vale. Fucking nice. And then Hydelight at number six, Hydelight has two entries in the top ten, Alex. Hydelight was the Katy Perry of its day. <laughs> Okay, how's this spelled? Mar? Oh, no, no, it's, um... That would be, uh, this is a PC game it's talking about. Okay, never mind. Why don't you play Hydelide, though? Okay. Since you're here. Oh, that horrible Rambo game for MSX is in here. Hydelide Special? Yeah. Yeah, not too familiar with a lot of these titles. Konami Soccer. Fire Crystal by BPS. Wizardry! Wizardry at a mere number 19. You gotta respect your elders, folks. How's this for a dragon? Hey, how do I fight again? Hold down A. <clears throat> there we go. Now rate this dragon. 10 out of 10? Oh, yeah! 20 out of 10? That's a 5 out of 5 dragon right there. It's the zone! The zone! What? Real 3D graphics. What the shit is this vaporwave shit? What? Wow, what is this? This is possible due to the 16-bit hardware of the PC-9801, equipped with FM7 hardware. Got across. Game does not look familiar. Maybe it's actually called Zone 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 now that I think about it. Anyone familiar with this game? It looks like it should be famous. I can't defeat the zombie. The zone is a zone. Toy Pop. We know what Toy Pop is. We do know what Toy Pop is very well. Didn't y'all watch the Namco Museum episode? Scoop! Here's some of the later artwork you see in the game. How do I get better health? Maho changes good Heitai to evil Heitai, so watch out for that. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, it says warp zone. 
I thought it was just a random screenshot and it was like, Suge, oh my god. This guy gets naked. That is truly Suge. I was gonna say, don't get me excited. <laughs> wow, this Toy Pop coverage is second to none. I was gonna say, someone in Toy Pop Industries paid a lot of money. Here's some comics for you to enjoy, if you know the language. Insert laugh track here. No. Some more magazines for you. Look at this. Oh man. It's uh playing the Goonies theme. Good enough. And to do the continue mode, you do this. But I guess they didn't do it right. Rest in peace. Yeah, good ghost. A lot of good faces and artwork in general in this issue. Whoa. Dude. This is where we live. Can't believe this magazine would dox us like this. Fucked up. I like that house. Can we live there? Yeah. I mean, we do live there, yeah. Wow. Who is that? Hey, chat, look at this guy. He's the guy who will help you score higher and do better in your video games with the Joy Ball. This is Joy Ball Kun, <laughs> the mascot of the Joy Ball. If you've never seen this controller, it's a uh, joystick style controller. Only instead of a stick, it's a massive fucking hemisphere of a ball that you just kind of slide around with your palm. And it has a freak for a mascot. What's I not do to like? like? A freak. I wanted to zoom the hell out of there. Oh my god, did we reach the end? This is the end! We did it! We've reached the end of one issue of Bi-Weekly Famitsu. Good lord. If there was one issue I was going to dedicate a whole lot of time to, it was the first one. Man, now we know what the very first Tell issue Kobo. of Bi-Weekly Bi Famitsu looked like. I liked it. I, I got it. <clears throat> I gotta say, they, uh... It's super cool. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so glad I did that. All the hype about games that don't mean shit nowadays. <laughs> Weird forgotten mascots like this guy. I love that guy. And barely anything seen of Mario. It's all like, do you notice how Zelda and Mario were just kind of mentioned in passing? Like, they were just one, they were just two among many games that were launching for the Famicom. Mm -hmm. Kind of like it was the expectation, like, yeah, you'd play this for a while, but eventually you'd want to move on to something like Yegege no Kitaro or, uh, or Ninja Hattori-kun. It hadn't yet set in that these games would be, like, huge and just influential to everything. You couldn't know. You just couldn't know. And that's retro history. That is retro history. Let's check out another issue. Okay. Let's move forward to issue two. Oh, I love that cover. That cover is amazing. Look at this guy. You seen this guy? That's, uh... Look at this fucking little hungry caterpillar looking ass. Yeah, it's great! <laughs> wow. Before Nintendo was really strict with how you portray Mario and all the things he does, there was this. That's basically Mario. That kind of looks like him. It's July 4th, 1986. Pretty close to the current time. Let's see what life was like, um, 56 years ago. I think that's what it was. I'm doing the math and... Danny! Yeah? This guy's watching you play Hide Lied. He's all like, you should defend there. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> should we move on to a game with different music? Would, would we all like to move on? <laughs> you should play, um, Asso. Armored Scrum Object. Sounds like the uh, Tim and Eric thing. Armored... Armored Scrum Object. You know, a scrum object. Yeah, let's just put on some Mario Speedwagon. I see Dragon Quest! Still covering a lot of the same games. We got Dragon Quest, 53 Stations of the Tokaido. And we don't know this yet, but this is Legend of Valkyrie. Let's see what kind of coverage they give that game. Because I remember that being pretty big. We got Arcade Rygar in here, Super Mario 2. 
How has the Famitsu Top 30 for the editors changed since last week? Well, Mario took the top spot again, somehow coming out ahead against Gegege no Kitaro. Bullshit. How did it happen? It had to be some kind of subterfuge. Someone called... Nintendo pulled their, uh, pulled their weight around. Yeah, someone called someone. Mm -hmm. Three is Gradius, four is Kage no Densetsu, five... Taking a huge jump compared to last week, Atlantis no Nazo back in the top five. After falling out at number six, the people can't get enough of Atlantis no Nazo and its famous Nagoya puzzle. Hey. We have... Yeah? This game sucks a lot. What, you don't like it? I don't like the scrum. Then we got Mighty Bomb Jack, Nazo no Mursame Joe, Zelda no Densetsu, Portopia, and uh, Ninja Hattori-kun, which still hangs on somehow. Alex, I think you're wrong about Ninja Hattori-kun. Am I? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. The readers, meanwhile, still love Goonies. Goonies is still at number one. Zelda is still at number two. The readers know what they like. Uh, Gradius moved up compared to last week, but yeah, it's, it's otherwise looking a whole lot like the same. We still only have eight games for the disc system. Nintendo, please release more games. Nintendo, hurry up. Meanwhile, in the USA, Super Mario Brothers continues to come out on top, followed by Kung Fu. And then a bunch of other bullshit. Excite Bike was pretty popular, I guess. I only knew how popular Excite Bike was because uh, Hot Topic had a shirt. <laughs> like it never occurs to you, like whoever talks about Excite Bike. But if Hot Topic has a shirt, I guess a lot of people want Excitebike that kind of thing. Excite Bike was usually popular. I guess so. New in New York, did you know? Uh -huh. Did you know that the American cartridges look like this? Oh. Fucking what the hell? There's no LED on it? It's all big? It's mostly just air inside, like the top half is nothing? They come in sleeves? Fuck. They look like little books. They do look like little books. People might mistake your game shelf for a bookshelf if you have a bunch of black box NES games. That yeah. makes you look sophisticated. I was gonna say, they might think you're an intellectual, which... Software review for Gradius. Boy, there is so little coverage of this that they have to go frame by frame through the ending. Look at this. <laughs> here comes, That's beautiful. Here comes the ship. It's gonna fly out. There it goes. If I was born, like, a hundred years earlier, I probably would have found a job as a guy who takes photographs of uh, Famicom games. Oh, and here's, here's the rest of the, the frames from the ending, in case you missed it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it flies away, and then kaboom! Anyway, here's the forecast for Gradius. Mm -hmm. Sunny, with a chance of... Fun! I've had enough of Dig Dug 2. Fuck Dig Dug 2. Oh, oh, I see how it is now. You're against Dig Dug 2 now. I do want this wind-up toy, but otherwise, no. Dig Dug 2 gets a big fat snowman from me, in my opinion. Wow. Alex, it's time for you to play Obake no Kyutaro. You knew this was coming. Another hit from Bandai and Tosei, who last brought you Gegege no Kitaro. This is Obake no Kyutaro, a game that was released in the States as Chubby Cherub. This game's got medium jams. Gudo? Guo! Guo! Try saying that while you play the game, that might help. Yeah, that's helping. <laughs> just looks, just looks kind of threatening when you blow him up like that. A little bit. Here's the various faces of Kutaro. In the cartoon, he's a ghost who's afraid of dogs or something. Yeah. I don't know how that translated to Chubby Cherub, but it did. And yeah, Chubby Cherub is very expensive nowadays. It's probably the what? most expensive early Bondi game. Why? I don't know. A map for Makaimura. Here's the second to last level. A lot of kids would want to see this. And here's the last level. Da -da 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 
Is this a prototype? The title screen looked different, didn't it? Shit, is this a prototype? Yeah, it had that weird... Uh, yeah, it had it way different. It uh, had that stylized title screen. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yet another prototype we gotta go looking for. Here's what the, the crew was up to when you were playing Cosmo Genesis. They were just eating sushi. <laughs> yeah, they were just eating shit. Guys, shut up. I'm trying to be a Cosmo Genesis. Who out there bought Chubby Cherub? How dare you? This is the kingdom of Alephgard from Dragon Quest. I wanna... This is the uh, the Dragon Lord's castle. You can tell because it's got an evil face on it. How much do you think rent is there? It's free. He stole it. Oh, nice. If you steal a place, you're your own landlord. Hmm. Various characters. So, you notice something? How Nintendo Power, way back when, sometimes they would give repeat coverage to games, but most of the time with each issue, they just cover something completely different. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an option for bi-weekly Famitsu, because they had to publish so often, and there were so few games, they really had to dig into these. I just think that's the, the interesting thing that really defines what was different about the, the two approaches. Because otherwise, magazines in the US were very much informed by this. I just like the original art they do. This dude's face. Oh, here we go. Valkyrie no Bulkin. Why don't you try that out? Valkyrie no Bulkin. Alex happily quitting Obake no Kyutaro. What'd you think? Hmm. That's exactly what I thought of it. Ugh. What the fuck? Now, if you played Valkyrie no Densetsu, the Namco arcade game that we covered back in the, the Namco Museum episode, this is the predecessor to that. That's actually the second game in the series. Hey, Mogambo, welcome. Welcome. Way back before Legend of Valkyrie, they made this Famicom one, which was obviously gunning for that Zelda money. Yeah, it made you put in your blood type. Normal video game. I like the caveman. That's last scene? That's... You die, I guess. Holy shit. Spoilers. Soprano no Chosen. Here we have Babel. Um, <laughs> a Namcot puzzle game that I'm not going to subject you to. Are you sure? You want to play Babel? Play some Babel. Babel. That's last scene? Yeah, play some Babel. See if you can figure it out. Whoa, Babel got good graphics later on. Yeah, cool. Wow, nice. Babel. Oh. If I may, a much, much, much better game than Babel. But that's just my opinion. Babel's fine. Super Pitfall. <laughs> oh my god, okay. The four faces of Harry from Pitfall. He stands, he jumps, he swims, and he dies. <laughs> That's basically what you spend your entire time doing in Super Pitfall. These four things. You swim, you die tips about how to navigate this fucking incomprehensible video game. Mario 2, the first ever footage from the game. It's not footage, they had to redraw it by hand. Dear God. Wait, it's a hybrid. It's hybrid screenshots and drawings. <laughs> oh man, someone definitely worked 100 hours to make these. Here, are there a bunch of fucking mushrooms up here? There's secretly two mushrooms and two one-up mushrooms? You having fun? I'm babbling. You're babbling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where's the shy guys? Where's the sniffets? I'm the shy guy. I'm the sniffet. I got bad allergies. You know, this seems a little excessive. What is this? Six 
eight pages dedicated to Mario 2, the first levels at that, but considering this is the most anticipated game of its time, maybe it's, it's warranted. Oh, you'd really need this magazine for these maze levels. Yeah, look at that. It tells you what to do. You go down here, then down. Take the bottom path, and then the upper path. Alex doesn't know there's a quiz later. What? I don't think Mario 2 has been on uh, Mascot Friday yet. We ought to cover that. Okay, so, you can play Ghost... You want to play Ghostbusters? <laughs> What's more fun, Ghostbusters or Babble? <laughs> Alex is playing the best games today. <laughs> oh, it's a ha it's a hint on how to how to deal with those stacking guys in Rygar. You gotta go boop 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 like that. Some more comics. More info. Here's how to be good at Road Fighter. God, Road Fighter? At least they saved it for the back pages. Today's recommended uh, things for gamers. Okay, what's your recommended book? Uh, it's a Gundam. Kido Senshi Gundam uh, Saigo no Akai Suisei. Is this a good one? Uh, the, is that a Gundam? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's probably good. I froze the game, I think. You what? <laughs> How did you break Ghostbusters? Broke Ghostbusters. Alex! <laughs> Unbelievable. Mr. Gundam is, is glaring at you right now. <laughs> That's his name, Mr. Gundam. Oh man, look at this. What a bunch of fucking nerds. If you like books, you might like the Gundam book. If you like music, you may like this disc of Konami video game music. This would be ultimate turbo nerd. I only listen to video game music. Actually, that's mostly true. It froze again. <laughs> For movies, you may want to check out this uh, this cult hit called Back to the Future, available on VHS for a mere 10,500 yen. You remember how expensive VHS tapes used to be? Yes. A ah, hundred bucks to watch Marty McFly go back to the 50s. This is why rental places were so popular. I ain't afraid of no bed. Freaky ghost bed. Tokyo Disneyland, information number two. Okay, okay, what's up? What are they telling me? Uh, 45 years of shop. 45 years of shop! Look! That No, 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 I'm not mad. I just, I can see Disney celebrating. <laughs> 45 years of shopping. <laughs> I took two years of Japanese. This is what you're gonna get. <laughs> what in the living shit is this? What is it? What the fuck is it? It's... Th there's directions! You think it's like a spinny pad, but there's directions, so you probably slide it like a 3DS control stick? What? Why would you ever... Disagree. Here's what I agree with. That is a women's pro wrestling uh, that's, game? Yeah, that's Dump Matsumoto. Okay. Okay, this shit I'm into. You can keep your discs of video game music. And your weird slide controller. I'm going with Dump Matsumoto. Yeah, but it's huge! It's like the size of a cookie! Do you want to use a D-pad the size of a cookie? Yeah. Well, fair. New product. Visor. 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 There's visors, did you know? I know now. <laughs> All these poor sparse schedules. Suddenly there's this guy yelling in your face. Damn, I hate when that happens. Everybody runs into the store. 
But you got what you wanted, I guess. I don't know. I'm not good at Ghostbusters. Here's how to approach the ladies at the bar. As, okay. a, as a sweaty guy. Oh yeah, sweat boy! You gotta make eye contact. Mm -hmm. You gotta go, ha! As your arms touch. He still has his fucking Atari 2600 stick! And it's, it's like he has a holster for it or some shit. Dude, let it go! Nobody likes Atari. Oh, they touched hands over their mutual love for Login Magazine. Available now at your local magazine dealer. <laughs> That's kind of underhanded. How do I get the ladies? Uh, you gotta buy Login Magazine, the magazine for PC games. Well, I mean, ladies do love PC games. Can I, can I get a hell yeah in the chat for that? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Maps for Ninja Hattori-kun. In case you need that. A lot of maps for Ninja Hattori-kun. Man, they're padding out this second issue. <laughs> it's like the first issue they were like, Oh my god, we, we reported on all the video games. There's no video games for us to talk about. Kyonkon on All Night Nippon. Oh, that's a, that's a talk show. This is a star known as, known as Kyonkon. Here she is playing Famicom. She's just like me, for real, for real. She is. We're all playing Famicom. Imagine interviewing a, a music star while you got this Famicom thing on your head. That's a power move. I love that! Is, is that just the Famitsu guy? I think so, yeah. That breaks down the barriers between the common man and the film star. <laughs> the, the Famicom hat. That would be a good icebreaker. Hell, source me one of those, Alex. I'm gonna use that whenever I make uh, deals. Okay, so I guess I, I think that maybe I can get a custom job on Etsy. Hmm. Here's what you gotta do. You gotta go to the building, you gotta buy a thing, and you gotta jump, and you go down, you go dush, and you go run run, and then <laughs> you could be a really cool guy. Everybody's dushing for this. We all dushing? Dush. Oh yeah, it's a lot of dush in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Fucking, who puts Mighty Bomb Jack at number one of anything? At Mario at number three. Okay. Alright. The rankings go Mighty Bomb Jack, Kage from Ninja of Kage, uh, Legend of Kage, and Mario. Good luck next time, Mario. Sorry, Mario. Sario. Sario. Okay. <laughs> this is a reward for everyone who's watched the stream for this long. Look at Mario's guts. I'm gonna just know you're crashing Ghostbusters. I'm looking at this. Oh my god. I love the face. the fuck? He has some kind of device in his hands that allows him to throw fireballs. He's got some sort of fucked up face. He has super powerful bones. He has springs on his, in his fucking what's, bones? What's this point into? He's got spring bones! That's so fucked up! Yeah, he's got spring bones! What? Nintendo, it's time to acknowledge Mario's spring bones. It's <laughs> Space Marine Mario. <laughs> this is what makes a video game hero. Guts, springs, uh, some kind of fire shooting device. You need all these to succeed. Okay. God. No idea what's happening here. Mario. Airplane. Good drawing. Which Corel graphics package did you take I this from? I was gonna say, that, that's real, uh... Well, Gozer has overcome our civilization. You what? Alex! It happens. The prediction will come true! Yeah, and... You, what, you got a problem with that? Here's a full map for Highlight Special if you need it. And another copy if you throw it in the garbage. No, no. I don't need it, honey. Here's some passwords for Highlight if you need those. <laughs> Having another go. 
Until you, I'm playing until you, you tell me to change. I don't know. I don't see any other games for you to play. We're just getting repeat coverage of Gegege no Kitaro. Ghostbusters. There was Wario's guts in the Wario World instruction booklet. I gotta look that up. Do you think they kept that in the Kmart version of the game? That's the only version of the game I have. Here's how to get Nagoya if you missed it last time. Oh, and it tells you uh, codes, too. Gradually, the mystery of Atlantis is being solved. There might have been a type-in program back there. It kind of looked like it. Here's more off-model Mario. Holy shit, this is Luigi. That is Luigi. <laughs> Fucking Luigi. He's already had enough of being a video game star at this point. Yeah, the Ghostbusters music will continue until morale improves. Oh, Alex, why don't you play Super Mario Brothers? I'm so excited. Wait, which one? Mario 1. Play Mario? Yeah. What I what what did I do? You what played I... you played twenty hours of Ghostbusters. You unlocked Mario. Check it out. It's it's a comic representing your first hour of Dragon Quest. You whack on these uh, red slimes, then you take the trip back to the guy who restores your magic, and he gives you a heal spell. I don't know about this. It's no Gegege no Kitaro. Just how to clean your TV. So you spray it with whipped cream? <laughs> I think that might be shaving cream or... Oh, that screen was filthy! What'd you do your TV, dude? Smoking. Yeah, it's, it's almost definitely smoking. What are you doing down here? That's me when I clean my video game collection. Your <laughs> TV has a 5 o'clock shadow. Oh, look at this! Telling you how to get in the crevices and clean it with Q-tips. They really didn't know what to talk about. Okay, that was Mr. Clean. Look at this guy. It's Batman. I wish I dressed like that. Yeah, me too. Oh god, it's fully... <laughs> the Q-tip is fully black. You hate to see that. I, that's happened with me with some games I got from Funko Land. You just... the Q-tip comes out completely black. More tickets. More fun. More video game. More Cosmo Genesis. Is that more Sokoban? More Sokoban propaganda, followed by Castle Excellent propaganda. Followed by Wizardry propaganda. Video games is just propaganda. I mean, if you think about it, Mario is pro-monarchy propaganda. Wiggly Kumari 2. I have never heard of this game. Wiggle Mary 2? Wiggle Mary 2, yeah. Haven't heard of it. It's new to me. Arcade Rygar. This game must have been hot shit back then. Go to the arcades and you play this and you have a great time and you're all like, oh man, I gotta go home and play Hot Toddy Coon. <laughs> Wish I had a Rygar machine. Or things we've seen from the previous issue. Comics. This is how the Twin Bees link up. They're little kissy guys. Mm hmm. What? Wait a minute. Oh my god, That's Alex. That's Spy vs. Spy. Spy vs. Spy started off as a comic in Mad Magazine, then became a video game. And through that video game, became a comic again. <laughs> in a different form, in a different country, in a different language. That's society for you. That's society. We live in one. Here's what Twin B looks like. This is like Lego Twin B, I guess. Actually, this is more like... He looks more like a Duplo guy. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting Duplo vibes. Going home and playing some Sokoban, Cosmogenesis, and Wizardry. Spy versus Spy, the professional. Whoa, okay. 
What? Okay. Well, I'm leaning my head to the side and it still doesn't make much sense. Fail. <laughs> Brought to you by Pepsi, though. Oh, look at these retro Pepsi products. Look at these. Oh my god, look at that slice! Look at that Mountain Dew logo! Slice, do they still make Slice? I love, used to love Slice. What the fuck is Mountain Dew Aurora? Mountain Dew Aurora! Are you kidding me? Take the Pepsi challenge. <laughs> it came in little bottles. Oh, they're precious. Little tiny Slice bottles and Mountain Dew. Someone here gotta know about Mountain Dew Aurora. Is that like a predecessor to, to Code Red? Yeah, it's gotta be carcinogenic. There's gotta be at least a little bit of cocaine in there. Okay, end of second issue. I want to cover a couple, a couple of uh, review crew notices in some of these magazines. I know they start reviewing games at some point. Let's very quickly page through a couple of these so we can see some early review scores. There's Mario again. He's squishing the turtle, as he is wont to do. Why is he always doing that? He's just... He, I don't know. I don't know about this guy. This Mario. Or Squoon. Or Things. Super Mario 2 released, and it has taken the top spot above Dragon Quest. What a week! What a week this is for Super Mario 2 and Dragon Quest to come out. Holy shit. Unforgettable week in video games. Gig again, Okitaro. Get down there. Get down to number four. Hey. Yeah? Oh, you found Mario's gold balls! I'm so proud! Alex did that on his own! Look, there's now nine games on the FDS list thanks to Super Mario Bros. 2. Mountain Dew Aurora was a strawberry flavored um, Mountain Dew. What the fuck? Sounds like some Fanta bullshit. It does. Are you anti Fanta? I like Fanta. I'm a Fanta drinker. Some maps for uh, 53 stations of Tokaido. I'm gonna go to another issue in hopes of seeing. Ah, not this. You know what, Dig Dog? <laughs> Digging this dog? No. No, I did not want to I did not want to see this in this form. Some people want to see it. Alex play banana. Wait, were you about to beat the game? No. Okay. I didn't wanna I didn't wanna stop a uh, a 1cc run. But I am telling you to stop playing Mario so you can play banana. I, banana. I don't I don't know about it. Oh banana. I don't know about this. Is that... is that a Minions thing? Where they go banana? Yes. They Sorry. stole that from Donkey Kong. They did. Unbelievable. There's Athena, soon to star in a wonderful video game. More celebrities, more articles. Here in this week, look what's number one, it's Makai Mura. Eat shit, Super Mario 2. Go to fucking hell, Dragon Quest. It is Makai Mura time. Wow, rocketing all the way to the top. I knew you could do it. Super Chinese number five. Who did Culture Brain pay off? That's my girlfriend. You look cool. Yeah. Are you a mole? Yeah. We did it. We're, we're, we're going home, baby. <laughs> this mole's going home. This seems to be more of the same. Let's try another issue. Eventually they start reviewing things. Finally! Finally, Super Chinese gets the cover that it deserves. As they fight uh, the Michelin Man. Also known as Unicorn. We saw his butt a couple of issues ago. More ads for banana. More armored scrum object. Who is this? I wanna meet her. Number one this week, you better believe it's Makai Mura. And Super Mario Brothers emerges as the more popular game between it and Mario 2. Isn't that interesting? Super Chinese climbing up... Super Chinese beat Dragon Quest? What? What in the holy name of ass? Sorry, that line is copyright the ABGN. Can't talk about the holy name of ass without paying him. Oh, this is Goemon. You really need these maps. Holy shit, this game is all about uncovering hidden stairways in the map. And occasionally the game makes you play these uh, first-person mazes. And like, 
like, they start to get really complicated, they start to look like this. So in the middle of this inscrutable game where you're constantly look, looking for hidden shit, you gotta do these first-person mazes as well. As was the style at the time. Hey, it's Judge Amaru! Hey, it's Sans Undertale! Hey, why is he getting eaten? I don't know. Not looking too good there, Sans. Finally, Judge Amaru. This is a different ad for banana! What the hell? That's why this game is a thing. Everybody wanted a cat girl girlfriend. It's true. They still want that. Okay. All right. Who's the Joker who put volleyball at number one? We're not. We're not buying this. Nobody buys that volleyball is number one. <laughs> who was married to the programmer of volleyball and felt the need to put it at number one in this week's issue? Above games like Mario, uh, 53 Stations of the Tokaido. Babel is up here for some reason, and Star Soldier. So the games you start to associate as being popular for the Famicom, like Star Soldier, they start to appear in these lists more often. As people realize, oh, this isn't just a, a regular everyday release, this is something that's gonna stick around. Meanwhile, from New York, Sega's planning its Master System. Good luck to them. They're gonna need it. Or Babel, I've had enough of you. Some Choplifter. Sky Kid. One of these is gonna have the premiere of. Oh, look, it's the guy! Hey! Finally, we see the face of Famitsu, who is still the face of the, the, the magazine, as far as I know. This is Neki, the fox, the, uh, the mascot invented by this particular artist whose, name's I, whose name I can't remember. Matsushita, I think his name is? You'd see this guy all over the place in the 80s and 90s, all over Famitsu. He was a he was a multi-platform kind of guy. Susumu Matsushita, yeah, thank you. Still wait, I know I saw review scores in one of these. We're gonna see some freaking reviews, and look at this! Replacing the the sweaty the sweaty review crew of the past, it is of course Neki the Fox. Susumu Matsushita, thank you, yeah. opponent. This week's most popular games, Gun Buddy Goemon, uh, Valkyrie no Boken, Metroid finally up here. Hokuto no Ken! Alex, you wanna play some Hokuto no Ken? No. Finally, the FDS list gets 10 entire games. Now that Metroid is out, it can finally have a top 10 to call its own. No, Alex likes this. See, here in the U.S., we're playing games like King's Quest. Some Goemon coverage. This is an idol I would draw. She looks tired. She looks, uh... <laughs> Blombie. <laughs> Alex a big fan of Hope to No Ken for Famicom. I am? Mm -hmm. I am. Yeah, you know how to progress. That makes you a big fan. I mean, I've watched some Crontendo in my life. Yeah. Yeah, that too. One of these is gonna have some freaking reviews in it, or I swear to God, <laughs> the Blombie Idol. I'm just gonna keep kicking, guys. That's what usually works for Kenshiro. Mm hmm Good ad. Dude. What the fuck? What? Battery specific for audio? I love these! <laughs> I love the art. Yeah, the audio just sounds better if you use these batteries. Battery for hi-fi sound. Oh, specifically for Walkman? For maximum compatibility. Hulk to no Ken moving up to number two! Taking Hell on, yeah. taking on Ganbare Goemon, who doesn't have long against the might of Kenshiro. See, I told you you should play this. This Who's looks. Who's gonna to die be... first? Who's gonna die first? Who's gonna die first? Possibly ColecoVision games, I think. A blowout on Metroid, Solomon's Key. Ooh, this explains GDV. If anyone wants to translate this, you can know what GDV is. 
that is the special uh, Tecmo ranking that applies to the their early games. It's sort of like IQ, but for video game playing. What's your GDP? Uh, two. Wow. Yeah. You're never gonna get into gaming college with that. I know. So buggy popper, jump, clash. I'm just gonna jump to the last issue because I know that there's freaking reviews in that one. Yeah, but this at this point, issue 14, uh, December 26th at the end of the year, they have pretty much codified their approach. Every single issue is going to have Neki in some kind of uh, situation with the modern video game presented on the cover. And for many years, this is what Famic Famic Famicom Sushin covers look like. What the hell is this Kimco? Kimco! Time Stranger, we played that! Why is it in a boxing glove? What? Kimco? Kimco, you make no sense. Kimco's good. Here's an electrician. So we've warped ahead a little bit. There's a few more games available than there was last time around. Number one at this point was Mylon's Secret Castle, believe it or not. They were not lying about this being a million seller in Japan. It made a lot of sales. What the hell is this is at number two? Ginga... Ginga Densho? Imagineer. Never heard of this. Pro Wrestling at number three. <laughs> Mississippi, Mississippi Satsujin Jiken. That's considered Kusoge nowadays. And Superstar Force. Look at this guy. A furry idol. I love him. I love him. Shout out to everyone in Japan growing up who got feelings for them. I can only <laughs> imagine. Okay, this tells the real story. The Reader Top 20? Dragon Quest. And look how many votes it had compared to the second place game. The second place game, by the way, is Castlevania. Fucking Castlevania just got blown out of the water by Dragon Quest. It did not have a prayer. Super Mario Brothers Pro Wrestling. Nah. Nah, man. Nah. It's about Dragon Quest. Review crew! Here we go! We Check it, it out! We made it to the reviews! This famously had four different people review every single game, something that would be entirely ripped off by Electronic Gaming Monthly years later. If you're wondering why uh, EGM had a character called Sushi X, that's because there was a similar character in Famitsu called Taco X. What? Yeah. I don't think they introduced him just yet. I think it's just some other guy at this point. But yeah, there was Taco X. And then when they localized that, it was, it was Sushi X. Pretty cool, right? Anyway, this week they're reviewing Deadly Towers. What did Deadly Towers get? It got a 5776. Not so bad, according to Famitsu. Legendarily bad, according to, uh, I don't know, internet humorists. The internet, yeah. I say like I'm not one of them. <laughs> Wing of Medulla. Ooh, got a three. That's brutal. That is a early Sunsoft game and kind of weird and janky, but I don't think it deserves a three. King Kong 2, a Konami game that never got localized, got pretty good scores. That is a good score. Ooh, those are good. Block Kuzushi, another Famicom game. Wow, yeah. Is this that Famicom? Yeah, this got released as Crackout in Europe later on. I guess based on the strength of these review scores. Layla, the game you played, was apparently entirely average, according to Famitsu. Yeah, Do you agree with these scores? Mm -hmm. That sounds about right. It's no hook don't no can, I tell you what. It's not. Here they're talking about Moido Twin B, the game that got released as Stinger over here. And there's very much a lot of the same coverage you saw in the previous issues. Let's see one more review crew. Okay. A cool elephant. What the fuck? What game is this? I don't know. Yeah, 1991 is when that came out. Meanwhile, this is what, uh, the end of 86? Hell of a gap in uh, release years. I don't know what's going on here. Or here. No, wait, this is, um... Suisho no Ryu. Uh, the Crystal Dragon. Yeah, yeah. Pro 
Pro Wrestling, Hudson's Adventure Island, Castlevania 1. Oh my god! Freaking the freaking infant school game. Freaking uh, Lum, Lum No Wedding Lum Bell. Bell, yeah. That somehow got in the top five. Editors love Lum No Wedding Bell. I wonder if they're all like, can you believe this box art? Can you believe this is what they're actually doing? <laughs> I want to believe. All right. Reviewers, what do you think of Transformers Convoy no Nazo? They did not like it. Except for one guy. This... <laughs> let's, let's, let's name and shame. Morishita ma Mariko. Mariko? What were you thinking? Mariko, what the fuck? Mar Mariko, come to my office. We're gonna discuss your feelings about Convoy no Nazo. Everyone else, that, that seems pretty good. She loves Convoy. The Doraemon game, which is not all that good, scored surprisingly well. Morio Twin B? I would have think you'd think it would get higher scores than this, but this is still pretty good. Family Stadium, though. You cannot fight against Family Stadium. Everybody loves that shit. They love that. The original Dragon Ball game got eights. Freaking you've played Dragon Power, right? Yeah. You wanna play it right now? Play, play some Dragon Ball and tell me if this deserves an 8. Yeah, I think Mariko's just along for the ride. She's just like, wow, video All right, games. Alright, which one? Shenlong no Nazo? Shen, Shenlong no Nazo, yeah. Now, I know I'm doing this magazine and its editors a disservice by just glancing over the review scores and being like, what the fuck, that doesn't deserve an 8, but that's modern gaming for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the introduction of, it's the introduction of uh, Neki's girlfriend. I'm so excited. Her. That's her. As far as I know, she had uh, two characteristics. She had blonde hair and big boobs. <laughs> That's like the only thing she let to find her. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. Who is this? I'm I'm sorry. I was thinking about buying Golf Force. I'm sorry. I'll I'll rethink it. I don't know what I was thinking. Sometimes you get, a, like, a death glare, you know? Even though you see it on the other side of a screen, you're like... Am I cursed? Oh, are these from CES or something? Looks like it. Love that guy. Yeah. A master system under lock and key, a la Wii U. <laughs> Bolting it. Bolting it to your flesh. Is that the Master System Crystal Skull? No, it's just a jar to put your business cards in. <laughs> Don't get me excited like that. What game is this that they're all playing? They're really into it, whatever it is. It's probably the best Master System game ever released. Alex, you're about to die. Let's take a look at one final set of reviews here. First one, Super Star Force did not score too well. This was a game that had, uh, it was non-linear, like you had to progress through different eras of, eras of time, and it was really tough to tell where to go or what to do. I guess they didn't like it that much. Kinuko, what? Scored 8997? I don't even know what that is. It's an Irim game. On the disc system. Oh, boo. I was gonna try to play it. No idea what that is. Uh, there's Diva, also known as Diva. That scored okay. You wanna play Hot Man? Absolutely. Alright, the final game you're gonna play is Hot Man, which scored 4664, so lots of fun to be had there. Hotter Man? Yeah, Hotter Man. See if you can guess what game they were uh, ripping off here. Yeah, we're all about the hot man here at Retro Pals. And Xanak, a true classic of the genre, actually scores pretty well. I think these are good scores for Xanak. This is about what I would give a, a Xanak. Oh yeah, it was a disc game over there, so even better. You could get it real cheap off a disc writing machine. What a bargain. It's open-ended Dig Dug, Alex. Yeah, it's really weird. Use Corporation, for some reason, decided to rip off Dig Dug. I guess based on the extreme unending popularity of Dig Dug 2. 
but uh, they went back to the original Dig Dug formula for this. <laughs> Dig Dug for fucking lunatics, that's how I've always looked at it, yeah. All the ROM sites would list it as Hot Man, even though it's called Hotter Man or whatever. Oh man! He's the champion of the Monster Wrestling League. Oh, I love him! He took out Frankenstein, took out all these guys. I don't think he could take out Frankenstein. You don't think so? No. Frankenstein's really strong. Wow, it's Puss in Boots. Yeah, Peril's Great Adventure. This will be the last one I look at, I swear. I'm addicted to this. In the holy name of fuck, what is going on here? It's a disc rider system, right? It's one of those disc rider kiosks. Okay, I thought this was reporting on the American side of things. I was like, what? Were they trying to bring a, a disc system over here? But no, it's just a disc rider. I got all excited for nothing. What are we reporting on for the US? Oh, Ultima? Who cares? Get out of town, Richard Garriott. Pro Wrestling scored well. Uh, Mylon Secret Castle scored well and also not so well. Opinion kind of split on old Mylon, as it is nowadays. Dead Zone scored okay. Would you say Mylon's a divisive figure? He is! He's a truly divisive figure for our times. The original Ikari Warriors got... Mariko, seriously! Does, does she just like Micronix games? Is that what it is? Maybe she... she's a Micronix mole. <laughs> Mariko the Micronix mole. I like this new character we've invented. She's just like, yeah, Mylon's great, but you know what I really love? I really love I Ikari Warriors. And... <laughs> and Puss in Boots. She's the only one to like Puss in Boots. Alright, as you continue to play Hot Man, what did we learn from this? We learned that uh, this is what all the US magazines ripped off blatantly, especially EGM with the whole uh, four reviewer kind of thing. The coverage was also similar. Layouts, you can tell, was uh, an influence. Man, Lum No Wedding Bell getting multiple pages devoted to it. Truly, this could only happen in 1986. It was a time for games, it was a time for love. A uh, time for tears, and a time for, um... Dove brand soap. Good one, Alex. We're sponsored by Dove brand soap now. I'm closing this window now. <laughs> and I'm bringing the screen over here. What was your favorite game you played today? Um... I mean, I played Mario, so, you know. Mario's pretty good. Aside yeah. from Mario, what was your favorite? I did like Dig Dug, too. Man. I guess... Layla was actually the biggest surprise. Ooh, Layla was Layla good. Layla was really fun. Layla was pretty excellent. Yeah, I want to play some Layla now. Other than that, there's a whole lot of garbage. You can see what kids were playing back in 1986. Your your anime license games, your garbage from Micronix and other companies. It was, uh, it was a real time. It was a time. I was just fascinated by how they treated Mario and Zelda as just like any other game. Like, oh, next week you'll be playing Gaga Gang on Kitaro, don't worry about it. <laughs> but by the end of the year, you started to see those games return to the top ten list, and that's what really established them as being like, oh, these are actually good and monumental. They are milestones, actually, and not just another game. It's cool to see that unfold live in yeah. real time as it happened, and I hope you enjoyed it, too. Ending screen. This is where the ending screen is. Hey, look, it's Mario! Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks uh, especially to Bootleg Off-Model off Mario in his many forms. What a great, what a great guy. S special thanks to Mario. Shout out to Mario, everybody. Shout out to Mario! Greets to Mario! <laughs> this is the last scene? This is the last scene. Special thanks to our patrons for making uh, this week's poll happen. Mm -hmm. Even though it was uh, a tie, the poll, uh, I still appreciate everybody voting. It was neck and neck. It was a real exciting... Uh, it was an exciting moment in video games, in it my was, opinion. It was a, it was a very important game, a moment in gaming history. It was. It was one of those moments. Mm -hmm. Alex, why don't you wrap us up? I'm going to look for a raid target. All right. We are also on um, YouTube, youtube.com slash retrofiles. We post highlights of our streams there, including our latest one, which is a, our, a really, really beefy, beefy one that takes a look at the... Um, the N-Gage. The N-Gage, It's yes. so beefy. 
the beefiest highlight. It was like five hours long of us playing nothing but engage games. We lost our minds. So please check that. We're also on Discord. Let me uh, drop in the Discord link if you want to talk about your cats. Please do. Yeah, yeah. Post your cats. Post your cats. And your Famitsu uh, hot takes. Mm -hmm. That's what our Discord's for. Exactly. Anything else? Um, we're also on Twitter, twitter.com slash RetroPalsHQ. You can post when we go live there. We've got new stuff on YouTube and all that good stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. We're going to send you off to our friend Straw Bros, who is back after uh, many months away. She actually spent some time here in the States and is now back in VTubing again. She's playing Astro Boy for the GBA, which is a real underrated gem, in my opinion. I played through this a while back. It's It's super good. It's super good. Strawberry's good. Famitsu is good. Famitsu is good. Video games are good. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, we'll see you later. See ya, folks.